Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on the Premier Network all over the country on Saturday, July 21st, 2018. This is episode 1507. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We've got smartphones. We've got smart watches. we got augmented reality. we got it all. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free. Uh, anywhere in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. Hey, fear not. Fear not. You can still reach us via Skype or some some such thing. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, call in. We got a, a website if you want to uh, call the website, uh, or rather visit the website, and that's where you'll find all the stuff we talk about. That website is techilabs.com. And we have a chat room, which is kind of cool. It's a chance for you to join the cool kids in the back of the class. That's at uh, irc.twit.tv. And that's family friendly. We have it's nicely moderated by our by a team of community moderators who do such a good job. Um, a lot of talk, a lot of talk about the new MacBook Pro, and I have one. I'm sitting in front of it right now. So Apple uh, last week surprised everybody, <laughs> especially those people who had just bought a MacBook Pro after the Worldwide Developers Conference, thinking, "Oh, there's not going to be a new MacBook Pro," and released a new MacBook Pro. They <laughs> And they released it with the new Intel uh, processors, the 8th generation processors, including one, the i9, that has six cores in it. Apple didn't change the design at all. It's exactly the same design as last year's MacBook Pro and the year before. Uh, well, actually, there's one exception. They did make a slight improvement to the keyboard. Uh, they said that the improvement was to make it less noisy. Here, I'll type on it. It's not, it's, it is really slightly less clicky. What they didn't want to admit to, because they're facing three class action lawsuits about the durability of the keyboard, what they didn't want to admit to is that they also fixed its durability, although a leaked memo has now shown that that was one of the reasons. What they did is they added a little kind of barrier, a little shield, a little silicone shield to keep crumbs from getting in underneath the keys, which had been the problem, even dust, and, and making a key non-functional. And because of the design of this keyboard, Apple, Apple has a fetish for making things thin. And so they made the design of this keyboard uh, very difficult to repair. It's, you actually have to replace much of the computer. It's a $700 fix if you don't have the warranty. So uh, Apple did put a little dome in there. It actually improves the keyboard. Now, I should tell you, I'm one of the people who hates... These, they call it the butterfly key. That's Apple's term for it. Uh, I've got, you know, the first butterfly key keyboards returned the computer, got the next generation returned the computer. This one I'm going to keep. I actually, it's a slight difference. Still, the travel is very short. The keys move very little. But what I didn't like about the old one is when it hit the bottom, it really was a thud. It really hurt a little bit. And I think the little silicone barrier, not only uh, sealing it from crumbs and making it a little bit quieter, this also makes it a little cushier. And I, you know what? I like it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But that's not where they're getting a lot of heat. And I, <laughs> pun intended, they're getting heat on the, on the cooling of the laptop. Now, this to understand what's going on here, you have to understand how modern processors work. In the old days, you say, well, you, you've got a, you know, 9 megahertz processor or 100 megahertz processor. That's a P90, a Pentium 90 megahertz. And that was its clock speed. But starting about 10 years ago, Intel started to add something they called speed step. The ability of a processor to speed up and slow down 
would it could speed up to quickly handle you know high demand tasks and then slow down to its nominal speed to save power and the and the ranges can be quite quite broad this i9 processor ranges from 2.9 gigahertz that's its nominal speed to something like i think it was 4.2 gigahertz it can get very very fast and the idea is it gives you power when you need it and and battery savings when you don't and of course, when you take an existing design and you put a pro which was designed really for two and four core processors, and you put six cores in it, that's how Intel's been making its processors faster. By the way, they haven't really been able to uh, improve the speed. They've hit something called Moore's law, really, which is uh, you know Moore's law for a long time said that the processors would double in power every eighteen months. The, the end of Moore's law has happened. Really, Intel's just been stuck. Can't get much over four gigahertz. Can't get much smaller uh, than na ten nanometers. Can't actually get to t ten nanometers. Have been a, kind of a challenge. That's the size of the ten billionths of a meter. The size of the trait, the uh, lines, the electrical lines inside these processors. Ten nanometers, pretty small, and uh, and it's just difficulty getting that small. So the way they've sped up their processors, because there is demand, you know, every year they want some, people want something faster and better. We, we're used to that, is by adding more processors to a single chip. So now these i9 processors have six discrete processors in one chip. But that's a lot more heat, right? That's 50% more heat being generated. And so normally, uh, if you see these uh, other companies, i9 computers, they have designed to dissipate heat they look like jet engines with big fans and <laughs> apple didn't change anything you know they uh and so people have been concerned that the i9 processor may end up not running at full speed most of the time because the cooling's not there and it's very uh, difficult to be sure you're getting what you think you're getting by the way this is not the only company that has problems with this a lot of PC enthusiasts don't buy the Intel i7 chips for the same reason. They say, well, you know, you're not really getting what you're paying for because of thermal problems. You're throttling that processor to a speed below that of an i5, the middle of range Intel processor. Don't get the fancier processor. You'll never see its full potential. And that might even be more true with the i9. Well, I'm, I have to tell you, I'm seeing interesting results. I think there is a, a, a certain group of people who love to jump on Apple and are just can't wait to say, oh, you blew it, Apple. See, overpriced hardware for, you know, people. the only people who buy Macintosh are fools who believe the marketing hype. And I don't quite go along with that one. For the last, I got this on uh, Thursday, for the last couple of days, I've been taxing it, working it, trying different things. And in, it, it pretty much, as I used it in most normal uses, even watching movies, even having several browser windows open, a movie going, other things going on, it always stayed well above its, its minimum speed, 2.9 gigahertz, and much above. It was really fast. I, uh, I I like to write software. That's one reason that Apple developed a faster processor or a faster laptop because they want people to write software and software compiles faster, much, about 50% faster. Apple's claiming in some cases a 70% improvement in speed. And then the, earlier today, I, uh, I, I really taxed it. I started rendering a 360 degree video and then I saw what people were talking about and this is actually not surprising if you really if you do a sustained high energy thing the processor is going to get pretty hot and it's going to start to throttle it's going to slow slow down to protect itself it doesn't want to get maybe above 100 degrees centigrade it doesn't want to get to the boiling point literally so it it uh, it's it slows down to co to keep itself cool the fans aren't enough to keep it cool I'm a little concerned because um, when I did run this test, yeah, I saw what people were talking about. But, of course, I was compressing video for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, and then I would see the processor really say, oh, I can't, I can't. I know you need me, but I can't do it. I'm, 
I'm out of gas. But now, ever since I did that, <laughs> I'm seeing behavior that I hadn't seen before, even if it's just sitting here. So now I'm really confused. Now I'm just looking at this. I, I was prepared to come in today and say, you know what? It's a myth. It's not a problem. Of course, if you work really, the process are really hard, it's going to slow down. But I hadn't, for the first two days, seen it below, drop below its nominal rate until I really taxed it. <clears throat> well, now... <laughs> It's not doing anything. It's just sitting here. The CPU is barely in use. Utilization is uh, around 10%. And the processor is running at about half its nominal speed. It's actually really slow, and I don't know what happened. I rebooted it, and it's still doing it. Did I break the processor? <laughs> what? What happened? So now I'm very confused. I'm using an, a, a tool Intel provides called the Power Gadget. And they last night, they pulled it off. Now, they, they, you can't get it anymore. I happen to have it before. So um, I'm, I'm trusting the Power Gadget. But maybe Intel pulled it down because it, it, there's a bug. On the other hand, maybe they pulled it down because they didn't like the bad press. Or Apple said, we don't like the bad press. I don't know. But I also use something called iStat Menus, which is a long-time Apple uh, tool that shows you CPU frequency. And it's showing the CPU running below its normal rate. The normal rate, again, it's supposed to be no less than 2.9 gigahertz right now. It's 1.87. And then up to 2.6. And then down to 2.4. It's all over the place. And I'm not <laughs> doing anything. So you know what? I was all ready to come in here and say, oh, you know, fear not. This i9, it's really fast. In the normal run-of-the-mill things, everything will be faster. Um, when you really need it, uh, you know, you probably want to turn the fans up if you can. There are tools that will let you turn the fans to maximum. And, and yeah, it's probably, as any thin laptop portable device, not ideal for half-hour you know, big rendering of video, that kind of stuff. You might want to go to a desktop computer if you want that, which has better cooling. So I'm ready to say that, but now I'm kind of concerned. I feel like I broke my processor. I've rebooted it. Let me reboot it again. <laughs> it's now not getting up to 2.9 gigahertz at all. I don't know what happened. Maybe, uh, Maybe I overheated the thermal paste that's normally used to attach it to the heat sink maybe i i just broke it maybe the but maybe the cpu reporting mechanisms are, are different it's very hard to tell so my advice just changed over the last two minutes i was going to say yes this is great it's fast it is it is hot it runs very hot when it's really working it's almost too hot to touch uh, but uh, you know that's because it's got a aluminum body that's also dissipating heat right right where the cpu is but now i'm i'm really wondering what's going on <laughs> why why are you doing this to me very odd very odd uh and i and i have to say you know if you're buying a very pricey this is well over four thousand dollars because you want that fast chip and the chip does not operate at its normal speed, let alone a fast, faster speed, then it, you shouldn't buy it. So now I'm really wondering, and I, I'm not going to be the definitive answer to this. We're going to have to watch and see what people better than I, who have more experience testing this stuff, maybe see what Intel says. Maybe they've got an updated power gadget that's going to be more accurate. But as of right now, it's hard to recommend spending extra for an i9 when it's underperforming an i5. Yikes. So the uh, controversy continues. 8888 Ask Leo. I, I wanted to tell I wanted to bring you good news today, and I don't, it's not. It's uh, oddly mixed. It's baffling, frankly. It, sh it shouldn't be slowing down at all right now. It's not even warm. 8888 Ask Leo. Let's talk high tech. Not just Max. We can talk about anything. Give me a ring. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. 
You know who gets here long before anyone else? <laughs> Works hard to gather phone calls so that this show can operate smoothly. I think today it was about five minutes, not 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> she beat me by five, folks. Yeah, five minutes. <clears throat> Kim Schaffer. Hello, Kim. Good morning. Welcome. Uh... Well, I, you got it. We got a full board here, but who should we? St and by the way, I should mention. Did you know <laughs> we're going to keep recording calls after the show today? I'm aware. We're going to we're going to stick around for a little bit because uh, we're recording ahead uh, for vacation time, as I like to do. I like to give people fresh shows mm -hmm. instead of reruns. So, Rich Demuro will come in for uh, one weekend, and I'm going to have a couple of pre-recorded shows. So, we will be pre-recording phone calls. So keep the calls going after the show gets off the air in about. Two and a half hours. Absolutely. Now, who should I start with? I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah. So I like to go see live music, and I went last night to a concert. And what I've noticed... Yes, I am an ACDC. People, I don't... That's my day job, but not a lot of people know about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm taking over as lead singer. It's, uh, you know... Just a something I'd like to do. I'm <laughs> I sorry. Go I ahead. Always knew. I, I always knew that was your, that was your hidden map. Rock but, and roll ain't noise pollution. So the artists <clears> wear <throat> the inner ear monitors, right? Because they oh, yeah. get the nice mixes. And you, you have, you yeah, have I wear them, them too, for yeah. some of your sh shows as yeah, well. Yeah. But what I notice with all these artists is they rip them out like right away. They don't even use them. Do you know why they do that? Yes, ninety like percent of the time, I know, I and get it's distracted, bad. So I don't, I don't know what the point of yeah. them ever having. I remember them seeing is Bono do that um, because you, uh, most of these inner ear, in ear monitors, and you can, you know, I mean, uh, we're not talking Apple earbuds. These are things that kind of go deeply into your ear. And they're very expensive. <laughs> uh, the ones I have are kind of similar to the ones rock stars use, and they're a thousand dollars a pair because right. they want accurate sound reproduction. So they're very good headphones, but. You can't hear what's going on around you. Now, if you're a rock star, it's probably a good idea to have ear protection. Mm -hmm. But they like to hear the audience scream. Is that what it is? Okay. And yeah, they cause... like to hear what their bandmates are saying. And you can't. Right. It, you know, I, you'll notice I pull them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you can't hear anything going on around you. You just hear what's coming in through the headphones. And as somebody who's never used them, I've just I've noticed that at like 90% of the concerts, yeah. they're in there to begin with, and then they just rip them out, and they don't even have them in the rest of the show. I bet you they put them in when they need to sing accurately. That's mm -hmm. when you want to wear them. The, the guitarists don't need them. The uh, drummer doesn't need them. But they should wear them for ear protection. Mm -hmm. And they'll get a better mix than the stage monitors, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah, I think some of it might be vanity, some of it might be coolness, and, and some of it might just be, um, you know, they want to hear what's going on. They want to hear the, the roar of the crowd. All right. That makes sense. Thank so, you for clearing that up. Yeah, I love them, but they are very expensive. And I use uh, ones that are made by, you know, the original was Ultimate Ears, and the guy who created Ultimate Ears left and mm -hmm. started his own, I think it's JH Audio, and, and those are the ones I use. I love them. They sound really good. And they're not too obtrusive. Hey, we're going to take a break. We'll get your first call in, <laughs> in a bit. Time. Scott Wilkinson's also coming up. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You know, it might be. I'm now thinking because the battery's so low. It's plugged in, but it's not plugged into uh, something that's enough to charge it. Let me see where my battery is. It's 25%. That should be enough so it doesn't have to throttle, right? I've rebooted. And I'm still, well, you know, I broke it. <laughs> I think I, I broke my laptop. <laughs> that, is, that is not good. So <laughs> this is the CPU... Uh, frequency and even though there's six of them for some reason it only tells you one at a time this is power you see it's not using very much power and maybe it is in a low power mode um, so maybe that's what's going on I don't know this is the temperature you see it's not very warm it's 48 degrees uh, this is utilization is around 10 percent and for some reason the clock speed is that was one and a half 1.4 1.5 it's supposed to be 2.9. It's well below. In fact, it hasn't even crossed. All right, I'm going to plug it in and charge it all up all the way. That's, I'm hoping that that's what it is. That's, that's crazy. If it doesn't get better, I'm taking it back. 
They idle. Are they idling? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. So uh, I was. I was watching Netflix, right? Oh yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's because it's just idling. There you go. That's a good point. Scooter X. You, you're right. It's. It's maybe just because it's just not doing anything. Let me. Because um, it peaked up as soon as I. Let me. You know what I'm gonna do here? Let's do. Uh, let's compile some. Something here, real quick. Not the most efficient uh, compiler, I'm sure. It's really a, a, a student language, but let me open up. Okay, so this searches through the um, the dictionary, the Mac dictionary. And, and creates a list of all the, uh, uh, let's see, what should I do? Most frequent, okay. So normally on um, iMac Pro, this takes 27 seconds. So this is a pretty hefty little thing. Let me just real quickly run this. Let me run it, and let's watch what happens here. Actually, and let me time it, too, as long as we're doing it. Okay, now it's now it's running a fairly well <laughs> the utilization is still eight percent. So I don't know. Uh, I wonder if there's a problem with this, the Intel Power Gadget. They pulled it off last night. They said no, they can't download it. On the other hand, I'm getting the same thing from iStep menu, right? Okay, Dr. Racket is was using ninety nine percent. Oh, it's done. It's done. So you know what? Look at that. You're right, Scooter X. So when it needed it, it went up to 4 gigahertz plus, 4.2 gigahertz. Let's do it again. Let's run it. Let's run her again, see what happens. So yeah, yeah. So there it is. It's going up again because it needs it, right? So maybe that's it. It's just idling to save, save juice. Can I get my code? Bump, dear bump. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's that time for Scott Wilkinson, our home theater guru. Now, I, I, this is why this is stuff is so complicated. And I'm going to defer on whether the MacBook Pro is a good choice with the i9 or not to some of the real tech blogs like a non-tech to do their benchmarks because they know what they're doing. Scooter X in the chat room pointed out that if I shut everything down, the processor is going to go down real slow just to save juice because you're not doing anything. So I fired up a, a compiler, a compiled a, a, diff, a, a program and ran it that goes through all the dictionary. And yeah, the processor went right up to 4.0 gigahertz as long as it was needed. Uh, thermals went up a little bit. Fan does go up, but it did it. And it, and it did it quicker. In fact, I'm looking at the time it took to do it. It was about the same amount of time as on an iMac Pro with 10 cores. So not bad. Not bad. I... I this is why you shouldn't listen to anybody, a YouTuber or Leo. <laughs> Let's wait and find out what the results are. The question is, of course, is it worth getting the i9 in, in a uh, MacBook Pro? And I think if you want you know, some real throughput uh, in a kind of bursty way, no question. That's what you'll get. Sustained throughput, maybe not. Anyway, no, I don't want not to use up your precious minutes, Scott Wilkinson. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about that. I just, I just hey, wanted it's an to, important topic. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of uh, address what I, I may have mistakenly said minutes ago. Oh, well. <laughs> you're, you're an honorable fellow. And you know, say, you, don't you trust are... me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I clearly don't know what I'm no, doing. No, I, I do trust you because if you make if you find yourself in error, you correct well, oh, it. Oh, yeah. I always do want to correct it, of course. And absolutely. I know you do the same. Yeah, absolutely. No one's perfect. No one gets it right all the time. So if you're willing to correct yourself, yeah. then as I am too, I get plenty of stuff wrong. But if I do and I find it, Somebody points it out and proves it to me. I'll, I'll cop to it right away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking now. At, uh, it looks like it's responding when I need it uh, to, and it can get to a high speed. It's the the real question, I guess, is should you get this if you want to render long videos? And I would say probably not. You probably want a desktop because it is going to slow down mm -hmm. as the as the processor does heat up. It's protecting itself, and that's what it's made to do. And really, right. I guess the question is, did Apple design enough cooling into this? And if you want it to look 
this good. <laughs> if you look <laughs> at the, thin. that thin, it's, you're not going to be able to do that. That if you look at the i9 laptops from other manufacturers that do provide cooling, it, they're ugly as sin. They look like jet engines mm -hmm. because they're blowing <laughs> a lot of air. Anyway, what do you well, want to talk about today, Mister Mister W? Uh, well, um, I've got um, a letter here, an email from Paul Konigsberg, who has an old stereo. Uh, Some know, of those old, old stereos are so good looking. They're oh, they so are, nice. yeah. It's, yeah. It's an old Sony amplifier and a pair of Sansui speakers. You remember those? Yeah. Um, and he, he's, uh, he's a violin player, and he wants to play along, and... But he wants to play music from modern sources, like his like his phone and so on. So, can he get something that connects to his old stereo, that lets him play music from his phone, also from his NAS, his network attached storage, yeah, uh, which is from Synology. I'm sure you know that name. Oh yeah. Um, and he says he doesn't necessarily want to use Bluetooth because he thinks that might be poor poorer quality than Wi-Fi. And yeah, maybe, possibly a little bit, but uh, there, there, you can't, Bluetooth is easier to deal with. You can, there are tons of these little adapters that you that basically have an audio output. You plug it into your sans or your Sony receiver and it'll receive Bluetooth and play it over the over that speaker, over that system. Amazon Basics makes one for 20 bucks. Uh, Harman Kardon makes one for sixty bucks. The BTA ten um, Wirecutter thought the, the their best pick was the StarTech BT two A, which is fifty or sixty bucks depending on where you get it. Uh, Monoprice makes one. So, and these are not expensive, so it might be worth trying. Now, I did find a few that do work over Wi-Fi. Uh, and the most common example, of course, is Google Chromecast Audio, which I love, and they have an optical yeah. out of that. Yeah. Uh, so you get good, you know, the, all the digital stuff. Of course, his uh, he won't have optical on that old receiver. Well, right? I don't know. It depends on how old that receiver yeah. is. Optical's been around a while. Don't forget. Toslink. Yeah. Toslink. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, uh, Google Chromecast is thirty-five bucks. I really, so. I use Chromecast Audio everywhere, and I really like it. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's also a company called Pyle, P Y L E. I don't know if you've heard of that company mm -hmm, or not. Mm -hmm. I have. I have in the pro audio world. They. I've got in fact a Pyle microphone mixer, which is a pro, one of their pro audio products. Um, but they make a, a wireless audio receiver for fifty bucks. That is Wi-Fi. Um, I was looking at uh, a couple others on Amazon, uh, one call from a company called Eider, I-D-E-R, and another one called from Forus. This one's actually been recommended a couple places, P-H-O-R-U-S, Forus, P-R-5, for 50 bucks. Uh, these are, these uh, are all Wi-Fi solutions. These are all Wi-Fi solutions. Some I'm kind of with him. Bluetooth, I feel like, is com they compress the audio so they can get it over a smaller bandwidth. Correct, correct. And, and that can very easily lead to poor sound quality. For example, I have yet to find a Bluetooth uh, uh, earpiece for my phone that sounds any good at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, he, he may very well be right that the Bluetooth isn't the way to go if you want good quality. There is and, a newer standard. You know, for stereo, we use A2DP, but there's a newer right. Aptex standard. But right. so few phones support Aptex. Right, um, and you'd right. have to have an Aptex <laughs> receiver and, and sender. So plus the fact that he wants to get music from his Synology NAS. Right, and the only way to do that really is over your Wi-Fi network, particularly if you you need to have a device that is probably DLNA compatible. Uh, that I believe stands for Digital Living Network Alliance or something like that. Anyway, it's a standard by which uh, media files can get shared between devices on a network. Yeah. And it's a very common standard, um, but you need to make sure that whatever device you get does that, uh, supports that, I should say, so that, uh, you know, you can get music from your NAS as well as from your phone or tablet or wherever else you, you want it to come from. Okay. So there's, there's uh, a good solution. You know, yeah. Very. Yeah. I, th I think I think one of those solutions, uh, Google Chromecast, if if his thing has a if his receiver has an optical audio, 
input, then that's a great solution. Otherwise, this pile or the forest uh, would be would be excellent solutions. Yeah, yeah. Ninety so, seconds you go. left. You go. You got any? <laughs> have you seen any good movies lately? No, oh, the last one I saw was Ant Man and the Wasp, and that was great. Is that an Atmos? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. the Wasp Atmos. and the Ant Man when they're flying oh, they, around, they fly over your all head. around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I, I, believe it or not, I'm looking forward. Uh, uh, believe it or not, I'm looking forward to the Meg. Do you know about this? I movie? am looking forward to it too. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I have, it's about a giant shark, a megalodon. A megalodon shark, and the reason one reason I'm looking forward to it is I actually performed on the score what is are you, you are you doing the tuba boom, boom. nope nope boom, nope boom. I'm, <laughs> boom, 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 you know it's kind of like jaws exactly yeah no no i i was hired to play seashell trumpet <laughs> conk conk he, he's our exactly. conk man on the conk <laughs> man it's scott wilkinson <laughs> laying down the seashell tunes. and it makes totally makes totally i want to see it know? so where should i listen for your conk uh well it's actually part of the main theme One oh of the main how themes. nice so the trailer you, looks hysterical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a lot of fun. Jason Statham and uh, Rain Wilson. I, 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 I think I'll, I'll probably. It looks like a good summer movie. Yeah, exactly. But now that I know the conk player, I'm there, <laughs> man. You'll find Scott Wilkinson at the AVS Forum. He's editor there, and his writing is fantastic. All about audio, all about video, movies too. It is a great site for anybody who's into this stuff. And Scott joins us every week. Thank you, Scott. My pleasure. We will go to the phones, and I'll I'll explain what happened with my i nine review when we come back. Yeah, see now, now I realized the whole time that I was looking at it all the last two days, I had Lightroom in the background updating. Now it is oh. ru running reliably uh, because Lightroom's updating, and I've got a movie on Netflix running. It's running well over its nominal. It's running reliably almost at 4 gigahertz. And uh, while it is a little warm, um, it's not throttling. So it is able to do, you know, I've got Lightroom in the background, and it's able to do a lot of, a lot of stuff all at the same time. So I was, you're, you, Scooter X, thank you for saying, you're right. It was not being used, so of course the CPU speed went down to save battery. Uh, it is a little hot. <laughs> it's 89 degrees. But um, but you know the fans are working and uh, it's not it's not too hot to touch. So that's the good news. Uh, I mean, if you're buying an i9 because you want it to be able to do a lot of things simultaneously, you know, watch movies, download, load, load right Lightroom, go through pictures, all of that stuff. It's fast. <laughs> that's a great job. So anyway, off off we go to Scott Wilkinson land. Sorry to. Continue to eat into your time. Hey, that's no problem. Hey, listen, when when are your vacation weekends? Just so um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll want to re pre-record. Exactly. I uh, I am not going to be here on nine one nine two, nine eight nine nine, nine fifteen nine sixteen, nine twenty two and nine twenty three. But Rich will be here on the fifteenth, sixteenth, and the twenty the last four uh, shows. So we will pre-record two episodes. And we'd like to do that Saturday, August 18th and 19th, or Sunday the 19th, uh, that, if we can. But if not, we can do it yeah, somewhere that else. Shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So plan on either the 18th or the 19th of August. And okay. then and then you won't have to do anything on this on the 1st through the 15th. But Rich will be here on the 15th and the 22nd for you. Uh, the first, I, I won't have to do anything on the 1st and the 8th. Right. 1st and the 8th. Right. And which and is okay because uh, it, it's unfortunate in a way because the eighth will be at the end of Cedia, and uh, I normally give a Cedia report. Well, you'll have to do it with Rich. Show, I think this happened last time. <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> well, I, I was with you last time. Oh, you were okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, so I'm I'm basically pre-recording, and I'm off on the first and the eighth. Yes. Okay. Great. You will. Great. Thank you. All yours for another 99 seconds. <clears throat> okay, so Emily the Strange, uh, her, her swimming earbuds are pile. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know they made earbuds, Spastic, particularly swimming earbuds. I have no, I had no idea there was such a thing even. Uh, that's kind of amazing, actually, to think you, you could put earbuds that play music, that have some electronics in them, in your ears while you're swimming. What? What the what? 
What the what? There are actually quite a few uh, waterproof headphones now. Oh, I that's didn't very, realize yeah, that. Yeah, that's very popular. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> Emily the Strange, you have a fascination with underwater noise. She remembers one, one time on the podcast uh, before the show started, I showed everybody my fossilized whale inner ear. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, I am kind of interested in underwater noise. That's for sure. For audio things, are Amazon Basics brand decent enough? Who makes their hardware? I, Emily asks. And uh, I don't know. I've never actually tried any of them. I mean, certainly their cables are fine. I have no trouble. I've bought Amazon Basics cables before. I have no trouble with that at all. As far as electronics, I honestly don't know. I have never tried them before. <clears throat> um. Marsworm, did I hear about James Gunn, a director of Guardians of the Galaxy, got fired from Disney because of offensive tweets? Yes, I did hear that. Uh, that was quite unfortunate, uh, in my opinion, uh, particularly the way it went. And I, I'm not going to talk about it here because it's political. You and stick around for the that? top of the hour? Sure, happy to. All right, to. thanks, Scott. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. All right, now one more time I'm going to talk... <laughs> About this uh, i9, because I have to say, I think I, I think I, I blew it. It shows you how difficult this stuff is to do. I'm now running through one of the reasons I wanted a faster processor on the MacBook Pro is because Lightroom is the uh, photo tool I use from uh, Adobe, and it's a notorious, well, forgive me, pig. It is slow, and on many of the uh, um, laptops I've used, it's just unusable. I've had to download third-party programs to import and review uh, the giant RAW files I take with my camera. Um, here's the good news. Uh, when I'm using Lightroom to review pictures, they're very snappy, much faster than it is on uh, any other uh, slower Intel-based computer that I've got, Windows or Mac. I'm looking at the CPU frequency, and it's staying well above its nominal frequency, 3.4 gigahertz, 3.5 gigahertz. Nominal, again, is 2.9 gigahertz. It's doing exactly what you want it to do. And oh, did I mention I'm also running uh, a Netflix movie in the background while I'm doing that? So I think in, in many of the normal uses people will want, this i9 processor will be fine. Yeah, it gets hot. It's almost uh, 85 degrees, and, it's, and, the, and the metal on the case right below the screen is... It's almost too hot to touch. It's pretty warm. Um, I can tell you it's 42 degrees on the outside Celsius. So it's, pre it's pretty warm. Nevertheless, everything's working. The processor's performing well above the nominal speed. It's not throttled down. So you're, I'm getting the throughput I expected. So let me, let me go back to what I originally was going to say <laughs> before I began the show and saw those strange results. The processor seems to be doing exactly what it wants, what you would want it to do. It's giving you extra juice when you need it. Uh, I imagine if you do, if you're somebody who is using Final Cut or Premiere to edit videos, if you're editing 4K videos or 360 degree videos, and you're doing big, long half hour renders, that's not an ideal use for it. It does. It, I've seen it throttle and slow down. Uh, but I would imagine almost anything would, even an i5. Those are the kinds of things you want maybe a desktop computer for. Um, don't expect but massive improvements in speed for sustained hard work like that. On the other hand, for the stuff that I do and for what most people do, uh, writing software, compiling code, editing f uh, pictures, that's, that's what we call bursty. You need some power. You need some CPU cycles for 10, 15, 20 seconds. It gives you that slows back down. It seems to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, the fans are fairly audible. I don't know if you can hear them. Put it, I'll put it up next to the microphone. So, you know, there's some fan noise, but you'd expect that. That's trying to keep this processor cool. And we don't know what the long-term effects of the high temperatures the processor is operating at will be. But I guess, at least for now, I'm going to have to say it looks like it's performing as you would expect, and it's giving me the extra performance I was looking for in uh, in photo editing. Uh, and, it, and, it, and in other respects, it's a really nice machine, 32 gigs of RAM. It's uh, You can get up to 4 terabyte hard drive, although that will cost you a pretty penny. I've got just the simple 1 terabyte in here. That's more than enough for me. 
uh, and, a, and a very fast i9 processor that seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. 8888 Ask Leo. Now we get to the phones. Let's go to line one. Old chef guy, my buddy Richard. Hi, Richard. Hi there. It's great. Hi, greetings. Great to talk to you again. Haven't talked to you in ages. What's up? I've been working. You know, some of us work regular hours. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Although uh, Anthony Bourdain says never work brunch. Never work brunch. I was a chef for 20 years, and I did brunch, so when I saw him talk about that very thing, I thought, it's so true. Nobody wants to cook eggs. Nobody likes cooking eggs. You, you don't get eggs famous making omelets. No. Nope. No, no. I used to go through three cases of eggs oh. on a Sunday morning. Oh, it was man. just mind-numbing. Oh, I didn't man. eat eggs for five years. <laughs> um, but that's not why we're here. I have a question yes, about sir. my. I bought a 2015 Ford Fusion Energy. Ah, okay. yes. That's the that that is the energies are they're all battery, right? They're plug-in. Oh, they're the plug-in hybrids. Okay. So it's a hybrid plug-in. Yeah. All right. And I have a Google Pixel XL two. Mm hmm. I'm try. I don't have maps on in the car because it's Sync two. Not Sync 3, and I won't pay them the $1,500 upgrade. No, and you have a and GPS on your phone that does a really good job. Does a really great job, but it sure be fun to see my screen, yeah. my phone, cast to the screen in the dash. Yeah. And I do have RCA connectors inside my glove box. So the way most people will do this is with what we call Android Auto, and Apple has its own uh, version of this. Yeah. Uh, and that is a car designed to do it, and many newer cars do it, all the Hondas and so forth. I guess that Ford does not. So Sync 2 instead of Sync 3. Yeah. So that screen, you said you have RCA cables. Can you can you put some video on that screen? Is that possible? Or do you want to have a separate screen? No, no, no. I, well, I'm currently I'm using the separate screen, you, using the Pixel as everything because it's so much smarter than the Sync. Right. Um, but I would like to be able to project the maps onto this bigger screen if possible. <laughs> but is it an MA? And I, so I have the adapter. I have a Type C adapter to HDMI and then an HDMI to RCA. And I got all that before I found out that evidently the Pixel to XL2 doesn't give me MHL. Can I use more acronyms? Is that possible? <laughs> MHL is what would power the Pixel uh, okay. while you're displaying the video out of it. You don't have no. HDMI out, in other words. Correct, yeah. Huh. <laughs> so you want to know, how do I get the video out of that? Yeah, I, that's a really interesting question. The Pixel uh, 2 is a Type-C uh, port. Um, you can get audio out of it, I know, because there are Type-C headphones for it. Of course, it's right. a charging port, but you're saying it doesn't have any video coming out of it. Correct. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not familiar with that. Oh, no, but, I stumped you. I hate. Well, you, it's not that you stumped. Yeah, you did stump me because I don't know if it yeah. doesn't have video. It doesn't have video. I mean, that's not an unusual yeah. thing not to have. Is video yeah. out of that Type C connector? You know, that's. Um, that's up to the manufacturer to provide it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, in in which case, it's too bad you bought all that stuff. Well, I can. They're just connectors. I can send them. I mean, they're not horrible. It's under fifty bucks, yeah, so I'm not horrified. HDMI out. Let me just see if there's. Uh, yeah, it looks it ways to connect the Pixel I, Two to some, the TV. Can you imagine some weird way that I could use a Chromecast? Because I do have USB ports. I could cast to the Chromecast and somehow through the USB port get that into the dash? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why, that's exactly. But let me look here, because I'm looking at uh, an article, USB-C to HDMI, no, not an option. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, uh, there isn't a way to get HDMI out of that Type-C connector so it looks like uh, chromecast is going to be i'll tell you what i have a, I, an article i found here from techlector.com you can google it as well best ways to connect google pixel 2 to tv and they describe a number okay. of different ways to do it um now tv is not quite what you have but since you have an rca right. jack that does display on that screen 
yeah, I think you're. Yeah, I think you can. You can do it. Um, you need you. You'd need a Chromecast. You'd need to convert the Chromecast. Boy, that. You know that's a tricky one because I don't know if the Chromecast would say well. I don't. <laughs> is that a TV? What am <laughs> What am I connected to? What am I going to? What, <laughs> what am I connected to? It might confuse the Chromecast. Yeah. yeah, but you can yeah. cast the uh, you can cast anything from the screen of the Pixel Two, so right. you can send it to that Chromecast, and the, the Chromecast is the problem is no, it's not going to work because the Chromecast gets <laughs> get, now now get this. All you're doing with the with the with a device that connects to a Chromecast is telling the Chromecast, you go get the signal over Wi-Fi and display it. You're not actually casting to the Chromecast. The Chromecast has to have Wi-Fi for oh. it to work. So that is. Can I, create, can I work around that by creating yeah, my own hotspot? You got a hotspot. It's getting crazy in here. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Uh, <laughs> my CPU's at a hundred percent. But yes, yeah. I think you. You could. That's going to really get crazy because now your phone is both a hotspot and video. All I can say is, uh, hey, give it a try. Good luck. I'll put a link in the show notes to this article that might give you some other ideas for getting video out of your Pixel 2. Old chef guy, great to talk to you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the old tech guy. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. That is that is a complicated one, Richard. I I don't I get I mean in theory that should work. You hotspot to the Chromecast. Right. But do you think it's going to make the phone run too hot? I don't want to damage the phone cuz I've been watching you have heat scares on yeah, your Yeah, no, you won't damage it. The pro the, Okay. Read this article. Cuz okay. I I think there are other ways that you could mirror like mirror, get a Miracast dongle that wouldn't require that would then take the screen because you actually want the screen. You can't do maps over a Chromecast. So the way the Chrome, oh. yeah, okay, you actually want the screen. So, um, yeah, look at this a Miracast tech Miracast dongle. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Miracast okay. dongle would do it. Okay. Uh, I think. I don't know. This is crazy. Well, like I said, I, I believe part of the issue is that I'm on Sync 2, and if I upgraded to Sync 3, then it has Android Auto. Yeah, that solves it right there. But and it's the cash. Jeez. Yeah, I know. I, I would just, I use the audio prompts anyway, not the picture. So I just, uh, I would, you know what, the best thing, <laughs> a little dashboard mount for your phone. And just have it up there, and that's what all the Uber people do, right? They're not—they're looking at their phone for, the, and they're using the audio I cues. About the mount, I thought about mounting my Pixel C. Oh, yeah, the, the tablet. Yeah, no. you could do that. Yeah, you could totally do that. That's a good idea. That'd because be better. The, the phone—the phone is so much smarter than the sync. Well, and you do you, Does your C have a, a wireless connectivity? Yes. Okay. So you got the LTE C. Yeah, yeah, that that would be that would work. You can mount it. Get us. You can get uh, suction cup mounts that with a with a vice grip that will hold a tablet or your phone. Suction cup it. To, you got to be careful with the California laws. They don't yeah. like you to block the windshield. Oh yeah, yeah. But I could just put it on the LCD screen built into the dash. I could suction cup it there. Yeah, because you don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore because it doesn't really give me any value. I don't need to monitor the right. uh, what the right. engine is doing on the screen. I'm yeah. just trying to get maps. I like it. And, you know, have a good interface. I like okay. it. <laughs> I think that's. By. And what are you doing with that C anyway? Nothing, probably, right? I love my C. I'm in such a bad mood about it not being upgraded. It's a yeah. really. It's my favorite tablet. They dumped it. They decided that the Chrome. Was good. Chrome OS was going to be the tablet OS, not Android. I hate that about Google. It's I do, too. Product. They really, uh, you know, it's what big companies do, unfortunately. I have a whole, I'm looking at a stack of, a, you know, I have my Nexus 10, I have my Nexus 7, I still have the old 7, and they're just like DBO. It's sad. I know. Welcome to Go Silicon ahead. Valley. <laughs> The soap opera. Now go home. <laughs> now go right, home. Thank you. Hey, take care. Right. Great to talk to you, Richard. Bye-bye. You too. So this, um, I'm watching this, and we're going to get to Scott in a second, but it is absolutely handling 
Now I realize what I, I always had Lightroom in the background running. And so it was always running the CPU. And it never had a problem. Just running it hot all that time. All right, Scott. Now we come back to the fabulous <laughs> Scott Wilkinson. And you have 313 seconds. 300 seconds? It's like five minutes. Woo. Woo. That's I can. I'll take it. All right. Okay. So, um, hey, everybody. So glad to see you. Always glad to be with you. Um, somebody asked me earlier about, uh, oh yeah, Miller Tech. Uh, what's the best budget soundbar under $200? Uh, that's, that's actually a, a good question and a little bit difficult to answer. Uh, in our roundup last year, uh, we did the Polk Magnify Mini. That's 250 bucks. Uh, so it's a little over 200, but it's, uh, it's really very good. Um, Yamaha makes some good ones. I had said in the in the chat room that Vizio was the first place I'd go for low cost sound bars, and it still is. Um, but uh, you might also look at Yamaha. Uh, I think the YAS one oh seven. They might have a one oh eight now. That was last year. One uh, the, we we reviewed the two oh seven, which is three hundred bucks, um, and that that got a recommended sticker, as did the Polk Magnify Mini. Um, the uh, Samsung, uh, they're, they're now we're starting to get a little, little more expensive. And then there's the Sony HT-ST5000, which I spoke about a couple weeks ago for $1,500. Um, <clears throat> but in any event, uh, yeah, I'd say Vizio or if you can stretch a little bit, the Polk Magnify Mini is probably, is, is certainly really good. Uh, as is uh, the Yamaha, you might look at the 107 instead of the 207 or maybe they're, it's, they're eights now. Uh, let's see. Hey, Tech William. Good to see you there, man. Um, you were also talking, oh, Graveyard Tube was asking about the temperature here. Yeah, I live in Burbank and man, oh man, two weeks ago it got well over 110 and this week coming up looks like it's going to do the same thing. So lovely. <clears throat> Just stay inside with air conditioning. Hope the power doesn't go out. Uh, we were talking also, Miller Tech uh, and a couple of people were talking about these new Roku wireless uh, TV speakers. Basically, instead of it, it's a replacement and an alternative to a sound bar. Put two speakers on your credenza or whatever, and uh, you get better stereo separation than you do from a sound bar. The problem is that they only work with Roku TVs. And the only companies that make those are TCL, Hisense, RCA, uh, Philips, and then the a couple of captive brands, Insignia and Element. They d these speakers don't even work with the standalone Roku um, s boxes, you know, the little receivers. And that was a mistake in my opinion. Okay, so they're made by Roku. They should only work with Roku products. I get that. But if they don't work with the with a set top box, then that's that's a that's shooting themselves in the foot, in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, so that's that's the answer to that question. Hail Caesar! What's the best sound bar between three hundred eight and three twenty seven? Yeah, well, you know. Uh, and Sean just asked the same question. What do I think? TCL's new T Roku TV wireless speakers. Well, they aren't TCL. They're made by Roku. Uh, they work with TCL Roku TVs, but you have to have a Roku TV, which by definition is a TV with the Roku built in. Now, that's great. They're really good. The, I love the Roku user interface and the uh, uh, selection of, product, of uh, streaming services is vast. So... Uh, it's a great way to go, but these speakers only work there. Uh, Lawn Dog, what happened to all the 27-inch TVs? <laughs> yeah, they're now monitors. They're now computer monitors. 27-inch TV, yeah, the, I, I don't, I think the smallest TV, well, I, I think you can get 20, I think it's possible to get 27 and even 19-inch TVs. Like, people still put TVs in their kitchen, don't they? That's what you'd want in there. Uh, but I think for, I mean, I certainly don't look at anything, well, 
I don't look at anything below 50 inches because I'm a big screen guy. And that's what AVS Forum is about. Yeah, but for a kitchen, I think 42. But for a kitchen, fine. yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you, Scott. My pleasure. Have See a good one. Week. See ya. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones. We talk about smartwatches. We talk about CPUs, GPUs, <laughs> and all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my phone number if you want to talk high tech. And I want to, I really feel bad now because I was, I was suckered. I was fooled. I misunderstood, misread the CPU readings uh, on this i9. I just want to reiterate that the uh, i9 MacBook Pro does, for me, exactly what I wanted it to do, and it handles quite well the heavy-duty tasks that I want to throw at it, particularly as a, as a developer, as a programmer. It might not be ideal for compressing video or uh, 360 video, but uh, it sure does the stuff I want it to do, and it's been running consistently at almost 4 gigahertz for the last 45 minutes without any thermal slowdowns, without any throttling. It's really done a good job. So I think this is... Uh, this is overblown, and it just underscores how hard it is to understand this stuff, unless this is your business. And there are some websites like a non-tech and PC perspective that are that it's their business. They do this stuff all the time. Unless it's your business, it's it's very easy to misread these numbers and misunderstand it. And I think that's unfortunate because Apple's getting a little bit of a bad rap from a, some, a number of YouTubers, primarily, uh, who are saying, "Oh, this thing is uh, this not doing what it's supposed to do." Well, I think it is. I think it is. It's expensive. There's no doubt about that. 8888-ASK-LEO. Now, we got to get some calls here. Let's go to Sarah in Hutchinson, Kansas. Been holding on for an hour. Thank you for your patience. Welcome. Hello, Hi, Sarah. Leo. Hi. I, I'm actually friends with your wife on uh, Pokemon Go now. Ah, yeah, thank you. That's awesome. When you, when you put out her information, I went ahead and friended her. <laughs> She uh, now has 200 friends. One of them is you. That's awesome, Sarah. Do you play? You must. I do. We we play as a family. We like to go out and walk around the neighborhood. It's and play really and... fun as a family. You know what kills us? It is. You know, my wife and I are 12 year olds, but our 15 year old won't play anymore. She says, "Oh no, I'm done with that." Which, oh, <laughs> we had so much fun two years ago when it came out, and 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 the reason this came up. Uh, Sarah knows this, but I'll tell the rest of you, is because uh, the folks who do Pokemon Go, Niantic, uh, updated it considerably over the last six months and really brought back a lot of the fun of the game. You can have friends, for one thing, and see where they go. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah, That's if she, nice. If she gets any gifts from Kansas, then she knows where it's going. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, look for Sarah's gifts from Kansas. And I'm sure you're getting some Petaluma gifts as well. That's nice. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah. We're so at least I should mention Lisa and I are now maxed out. You can only have 200 friends and so we both do unfortunately. So no more no new friends. What's your favorite Pokémon? Oh, uh, I'm I'm a Pikachu fan. Me too. I always love Pikachu. This has been a good summer for Pikachu fans. Lots of Pikachus in sun hats. That's right. <laughs> what, what can, well, now I'm playing it, by the way. What can, what can I do? If I get a little distracted, it's because I see a Vino Nat. I've just got to pick him up. What can I do for you, Sarah? Well, I bought a used MacBook. It's a 2010, so I know it's it's quite old, but we upgraded the, the RAM and put in an SSD nice. hard drive. Good upgrades. Uh, what I'm concerned about is when Mojave comes out, do I go from High Sierra to Mojave, or am I better off staying with an older OS? The general rule is if Apple lets you do it, Apple will at some point cut it off, and you okay. won't, and it'll just say, sorry, you know, this is the most recent you can use. But you should upgrade if you can. The good news is, in the last eight years, it's an eight-year-old laptop, but Intel hasn't made massive improvements in processors. And, and so you're probably pretty compatible with anything apple's doing right now uh yeah it runs high sierra pretty well yeah so. yeah um and so i think yes absolutely go to mojave um mojave has some nice new features you know the main reason you want to do it is for any security uh, and bug fixes that uh, that are there and apple doesn't necessarily publicize those so you always want to get the updates but you don't have to worry apple won't let you update if it's not compatible or it's going to really slow your system down they're pretty good about that 
I like the older, you know, I, I, my real reluctance on upgrading to the new MacBook Pro, besides the price, was I really like the older MacBooks. I like the travel. I don't mind the, the bigger size. It's a little thicker. That's fine. Better battery life. Uh, and I like the keyboards. I don't like the touch bar all that much. They don't have a touch bar. So I was using a 2015 MacBook Pro until until I got this new one. It, they're very good. Yeah, I've been listening to your reviews. So yeah. I, when I go to get a new one, I, I, I'm going to wait till they get that keyboard worked out. Well, I feel like this one's better. It's not, you know... We'll see if it's as, if it's more reliable. I think they have solved that. And and I was a big, as you know, hater of the new butterfly keyboards. This one, it's just a slight difference, but it's enough to make me say, well, I think I can live with it. I'm not happy, but I think I can live with it. You, your your 2010 is just fine. Keep stick with it. By the way, they stopped selling those uh, when they put out these new MacBook Pros. That was it on the 2015, 15 inches. They're not selling those old ones anymore. So. Uh, I don't know what will happen to the MacBook Air, uh, which is the last really old MacBook, old-style MacBook they sell. But my, my sense is they're, they're dropping that, too, sometime this year. Sarah, so nice to talk to you. I'll look for you. Uh, I'll look for some Hutchison, Kansas pokey stops. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Thank you. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. The lending leader, Quicken Loans, they created it. We've talked about it before. I hope you know the best online mortgage approval process out there. But now they've taken another step, and I think it's so important because interest rates now have started to go up. For years, you know, we had very flat interest rates. It was great. But I remember those days when you were home hunting a few years ago, and you, and there was pressure to get that deal done because – in a month, the interest rates are going to go up, and then they're going to go up again. They're going to go up again. And that means even like a quarter point means in the long run, lots, thousands of dollars extra for that house, you know? So it's really uh, a, what they come up with is a great idea that's timely because the interest rates now are going back up. Uh, they they call it rate shield approval. I'm, let me tell you about it. So you know you go to rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. You go there, and you can uh, apply for your home loan. You can do it. All on the phone. You don't have to go get paperwork or anything. They do it all for you. They they call it the power buying process. They verify income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you verified approval. You choose the rate, the term, the down payment. Then they give you verified approval. That means you're as good as a cash buyer. Because when you go in and make an offer on a house, the, the seller knows, well, they're good for it. They've already got the loan. So that's a really big deal, and it's a great way to start. But here's how... Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage takes the anxiety out of buying a house. Because once you're verified, then you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. They lock out your rate for up to 90 days. They give you three months to shop, and they guarantee your rate, that's it. It won't go up. It could go down. If rates go down, and that could happen, they will ratchet your rate down, but they just will never go up. So it's a win either way, right? And it takes all the anxiety out of home shopping. You're good, you're approved, and your rate, you know your rate, you know exactly what's going to cost. This is the kind of thing you'd expect from America's best mortgage lender, Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. I want you to try it. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash techguy. Get rate shield approval. It's only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions, and additional exclusions or conditions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, and MLSConsumerAccess.org, number 3030. That's rocketmortgage.com slash techguy. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of the Tech Guy podcast. And I thank you for patronizing them so that they say, hey, this works, and they keep supporting the show. It all, it all works. Thank you. On we go to line three. David in Escondido, California. Hi, David. Hello, Leo. Great to talk to you. Thank you for hanging on. What can I do for you? Well, I'm caught between two tech companies that are telling me it's the other guy's fault. Yeah, well, they'll always do that if they can. So I'm a, uh, a cord cutter on cable. I've, uh, I, I canceled my cable about two years ago. My current um, streaming service of choice is PlayStation View. And uh, a couple of days ago, I got an email from Cox, my uh, internet service provider, saying that uh, there was suspicious activity coming oh. from my network that was oh. indicative of maybe a bot attack or something. Yeah. So I gave, I gave Cox a call, and um, they immediately tried to sell me on a uh, customer protection service package. That oh, man. Offered a month. 
Now, if uh, that's the reason they gave you that alert, that's reprehensible. But maybe there is something going on. Did they give you any more information? Well, here's the interesting thing. Um, the, the conversation got sort of sidetracked because evidently I've been paying for a, a basic version of the service package for years and I had no idea. Oh, thank you, Cox. God, these yeah. companies are awful. I know, I know. So I went ahead and I canceled that. Um, and uh, I called PlayStation View. And uh, they uh, kind of stepped me through a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of things. And, and we finally got to a solution. What was happening is I have it on two different Rokus in the house. Hold, hold on and a sec, because I, I have to take a break. Well, actually, sure. we got about a minute. If you want to give me a minute summary, then let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was getting an error, uh, basically, that uh, uh, the I was forbidden from accessing PlayStation View. All the other Roku channels were working fine. Wow. Uh, so I, I thought it probably had something to do with this email that I got from Cox. Uh, so um, That sounds like anti-competitive behavior. Of course, they don't like PlayStation View because you're paying, you're paying Sony for access to the TV channels, not Cox. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He was able to. Uh, uh oh! Now Cox, now Cox is cutting your internet. <laughs> Hang on the line. We're gonna take a break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You're fading in and out. The folks at Cox are pushing. They're mess with him. Mess with him. <laughs> wow. You're on a you're on a VoIP solution. You're on a wireless solution. Yeah, I have T-Mobile. Um, oh, T-Mobile, but you're oh, but your T-Mobile Wi-Fi calling probably, huh? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So Cox started said, "Man, nah, he's talking about us." No, I don't want to be too paranoid. So, well, so it, Sony it, said what? Because you have two Roku's, there's a problem. Well, no, they uh, they were able to. We ended up. Um, it, it had something to do with it not being able to access my my profile for uh, PlayStation View. So they had me create a new profile, and uh, that ended up fixing the the issue. Now. I still have a problem because if I try to log on to PlayStation View's uh, website to access my account, yeah. uh, I can't access it. Um, so the PlayStation View is telling me that uh, that my ISP is blocking that IP address. And I'm not really sure how that works. But when I spoke to Cox about that, they said they don't have the ability that they don't block IP addresses. Well, that's wrong. They could totally block an IP address. Yeah, and the interesting thing, they told me this in the second call to tech support. And when I told them about the email regarding the suspicious activity, they said they had no record of sending me that email. Oh. Well, it could be spoofed. There's no reason that's not spoofed. Although, the phone number in the email, is it actually Cox? Uh, it is actually Cox. It is reference. Because uh, a spammer or somebody out to get you would not... They would say they're Cox, but the phone number would be somebody else. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. It was pretty sophisticated it was. There were a couple links to uh, to download uh, malware bytes or um, uh, or go to Microsoft Defender. I didn't click on them, obviously. Um, well, it could have been you. Were, that was spoof email. Yeah. The first conversation I had with Cox Tech Support, they told me that there was an issue with my internet service. They said there's something on the line that's zero. And they were reading it at like at a thousand. Second time I called, they, they said the internet was working fine. So I'm getting conflicting information. Huh. But ultimately, what I'd like to do is find out how do I get them or get somebody to unblock the IP address so I can access PlayStation via the, the, their website if I need to change my password or, or why would it be or even blocked? Cancel. Well, so it could be blocked locally. I mean, it, and it may be that you you know I don't. What router are you using? Is it a modern router? Is it an Asus router? Okay. You want one thing you probably should do is go update the firmware on that. I did that last night. Actually, okay. I updated the firmware, um, and uh, it actually improved the, the internet. Um, yeah, and if and, and in general. Yeah, and if there were any malware on your router, that would have wiped it out. <clears throat> so yeah. and, that's uh, good. Also, I, I scanned all our computers. We have two Macs and and a PC. Uh, I use malware bytes to scan all those, and it didn't show anything on those. So okay. I'm fairly certain that there is no activity. Now, something that's interesting that may have triggered this is I just had knee surgery, so I've been laid up, and I've been watching a ton of PlayStation View. Um, and I've actually exceeded my data limit for the month on top. Hang on. 
I got to come back here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo, the phone number. I'm still talking uh, a little bit here uh, because it's. It, I want to get to the bottom of it with David and Escondido. Just a quick recap. He has Cox as his cable company. He thought he got an email from Cox. Could easily have been a spoofed email. That's the kind of thing bad guys do that said, you've got malware in your network. Contact us. Uh, it had links to what it said were uh, anti-malware, uh, very reputable anti-malware tools. But maybe those links led somewhere else. The phone number, we don't know. Maybe it was Cox. Maybe it was somebody else. Now, though, weirdly enough, he's a PlayStation View subscriber. He can't. He's The PlayStation website, PlayStation View website, is blocked. Cox says, we don't block websites. And they wouldn't. I mean, that would be a real cause for a, for a, an FTC slapdown if they blocked a competitor's website. So I would be surprised if they were blocking it. But where is it blocked? You updated your router, uh, so you know the router is not blocking it. Mm -hmm. And the PlayStation View service on the Roku is working again, so we've got that fixed. If I go to uh, try to access uh, PlayStation, uh, their website, uh, when I try to log in, I get a repeated error that my username and password isn't correct. And ah. I tried it multiple times. I know it's correct. Yeah, I would say uh, this is now not Cox, but probably has more to do with PlayStation View. And you've tried it on multiple computers? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is when I try to access it on my cell phone via browser... Uh, and I'm not using my Wi-Fi, I can access their Oh, really? With their user well, maybe Wi-Fi. Cox is blocking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, very confusing. Well, that's interesting. Cox was kind of misrepresenting. Um, I'm sure they block some stuff. Everybody does. Might have been misrepresenting that. But they would be really in trouble if they started blocking a competitor like PlayStation yeah. View. That would be a big deal. Well, PlayStation View's tech support suggested that I call Cox and try to get them to unblock the IP address. Well, um, now it's not that it's blocked. It. You can get to the website, right? But you just can't enter the password. I can't log in, correct. So that's not blocked. Okay. Um, if you're getting the images from the PlayStation View site, that's not blocked. I don't know what's going on um, hmm. with your password, but that's something. That's that's a separate thing. And honestly, I don't think that has anything to do with Cox at all. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with uh, if it's doing it on multiple computers. But then you can log in on your phone. I, that's a that's odd. Yeah, that is really odd. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that would be. You got me. Okay. Uh, how could that? How could? Hmm. And have you tried resetting your password just to see? Uh, uh, that's one of the steps that PlayStation View had me do. Oh, and it's still not working. Right. We we had trouble because I was trying to do that uh, when I was on the line with them via my, my Wi-Fi network. So that didn't work. So they said, well, can you access our website via your cell phone? And it and, did. And it did. And I was able to reset the password there. That is weird because, of so course, a cell phone, you're using T-Mobile. It's the Internet service provider. And it works with T-Mobile, but it doesn't work with exactly. Cox. That is exactly. a little odd. It, it is seems to suggest my network or, or Cox in this particular. Yeah, situation. something's going on. You 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 handled the router, I think, effectively um, mm -hmm. by redoing the firmware. I would look in the and settings. I even, I even changed my password on my my router too, just Good. to be safe. Uh, now the now the next thing is maybe to remove uh, all the computers. You know, turn them off or turn off Wi-Fi on them. And one and try and you just see if you can narrow it down. See if one of the computers is doing something. Okay. Uh, but I but you got me. That's a that's a very odd. Yeah, I thought this was a good one for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, computers are annoying. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're annoying, and you, and uh, you know, I I don't blame you for saying, well, maybe maybe my internet service provider, since they are a television cable company, has something to do with this. It doesn't sound, at this point. I don't know. I, I, yeah, but I agree with you that that would, that would be very risky for them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're not going to take that chance. There, you know, right. there's a lot of scrutiny already on uh, cable internet providers uh -huh. and any competitive. So, um, 
PlayStation View said maybe if, if I could get them to uh, change my uh, my IP address. Yeah, try that. That's actually a good idea. It may actually be PlayStation's blocking your IP address because that's the other thing. You are doing a different IP address. So, yeah, see if yeah. you can. One way to try doing that without calling Cox, and it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, is to disconnect your router and cable modem, wait mm -hmm. 10 minutes, and then reconnect. Sometimes you'll get assigned a new IP address. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess I'll just have to. And I'll get you know. Check out the chat room because they have all sorts of things that they it could be an ISP router misconfiguration. Could be could be bad antivirus software blocking PlayStation View. Don't you know? Security software is known sometimes to cause problems like that. Um, a lot of people use PlayStation View with Cox, so I mean we know that. So it's not that they block it in general and blanket blocking. Blanket Cox blocking. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what's going on. That's a, that's a mystery. 8888 Ask Leo. Uh, Sam Carlsbad, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Sam. Hey, how we doing, Leo? I'm doing good. How you doing? Fantastic. Hey, I, I got a quick question, hopefully, and uh, you probably could handle it. It's that to do with my cable modem, my router. Yes, sir. And... Uh, I had this dang thing since 2012, and so I think it's on a, a blink and getting ready for a new one. Yeah, All people right? get mad at me when I say routers wear out, but they do. Yes, they do, I bet. <laughs> Look, here I am. I'm, I'm with Cox. That's my cable provider, and I'm looking on their site about which is yeah. which brand that they recommend, and my God, there's a whole list. Yeah, you're going to buy one, in other words, which is a good idea. It's yeah. silly to rent it. It's much more expensive to rent it, and if you buy one, you can get a nice one. Well, they have one here, the highest capability, uh, capability package, uh, dual bond, band rather, uh, what channels. Yeah, you want Doxus 3 or 3.1. The Wirecutter recommends Netgear. You can go to thewirecutter.com to see their recommendation. I use Aris, A-R-R-I-S. Those are good, too. Surfboard? Surfboard's great. And uh, if you get Doxus 3, you're, you're set. It'll save you money. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, just make sure, as long as it's one of their recommended ones. You know, it is hard to choose, but, uh, yeah, that Aeris surfboard, I use that myself. Well, we got a Netgear Nighthawk Wi-Fi uh, modem AC1900. Yeah. So the wire cutter uh, used to recommend that Aeris. Okay. And, uh, you know, I love them. They're really good. They, they test all the reviews. And their current yeah. recommendation for um, a, a Wi-Fi, for a, I'm sorry, for a cable modem, and I'm sure it's compatible with Cox. It is. is okay. Doc 3.1? Yeah. So probably your provider's not yet supporting Doxus 3.1. They're probably doing Doxus well, 3. Not, but they say they will be, but you're Good. the head of the game. Good. Yes. So might as well, as long as you're going to buy it, right? The one the cable, the one the um, the wire cutter recommends is the Netgear CM500. That's good, too. But no, if you're getting that Doxus 3.1 uh, Aeris surfboard, that's the one I use, you're kind of future-proofed. Now, what about this highest capability package and dual band? Some say no, some say yes, some say Gigablast, Ultimate, Essential. Those are, you get those from the internet service provider, not from the cable modem. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So you don't need to get a cable modem that'll do more than your ISP will. So, but, but you know, if, if it's not going to cost you a huge amount more, no. it's nice mind, to have like, that. Right, you know, like 160, 180 bucks. Wow. That's, that is kind of expensive. So the one that, uh, the one that uh, the wire cutter currently recommends is sixty dollars from Amazon, but it's Doxus three point oh, not three point one. And uh, the number of channels has to do with your internet service provider. All right. Um, no internet service provider does more than sixteen by four, but you know who knows down the road they might. I would say don't spend one hundred eighty bucks, even though after two years you'll probably still be ahead. Okay, so so get the three point one. Uh, yeah, don't get the fanciest heiress. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it, but if it's Doxus 3.1, you're good. Oh, okay, I, I got a CB8200 Gigablast. Nice. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, okay. I like personally the Giga Blaster 5000, but, uh, you know, if you can get the 300, that's good too. The 300. I'm just teasing you. That sounds great. What the? Oh. I'm just teasing you. That sounds perfect. Okay, Leo, you have a safe day out there. All right, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> He's been everywhere, man. He's...
breathing the mountain air, man. He's our Johnny Jet, the traveling guy. He joins us every week to help us travel better with technology. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Leo. Or should I say, aloha. Aloha. I'm back from Hawaii. I'm in Los Angeles. So jealous. Catching up on all my work. But so um, it's, it's nice to be home, but it was it was better to be in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had, a nice, you had a vacation. Well, I had a couple days of vacation at the end. I was really there for work. Oh. Um, and, but then we extended. And, and that's actually one of the best things. Actually, that's a new term. I don't know if you heard about that. What's which that? I do not like this term. It's called bleasure. Bleasure? That sounds it's painful. Good. Yeah, what? it's like business, business and leisure combined. So leisure, okay. I can't remember which hotel chain is starting was starting this. It might have been Best Western, but um, the, you know they're trying to tell people, which I agree with this philosophy. I just don't like this word, where you know if you're on a business trip, you know the best thing to do is to extend and bring your family yes. over if you can, because it will save on costs, save on a flight. And so that's that's actually one of the new trends is this bleasure thing. You know, so, I knew that because a lot of people visit our studios, uh, they're on bleasure. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, their their spouse is there for a conference and they tagged along and they said, let's go visit this. I see that a lot. It's very common. So because yeah. conferences, I, business conferences are often in nice areas, places people want to go. Oh. For sure, you'll see, you'll find them all over yeah. nice hotels all around the world. Yeah. So that is definitely the, the one thing about that, though, is when you are traveling for business and you're bringing your family along, you just got to make sure that they know you're not on vacation, yeah. but they are. Yeah. So it's kind of difficult because they're like, "What's up? Why aren't we going out?" And you're like, yeah. well, "I got to work." It can so, set them up for a disappointment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and speaking of business um, trips, you know, everyone asked me, how do I get into all the airport lounges? So there's a great app out there and, and it's called Lounge Buddy. <laughs> and, it, and it's for iOS and Android. But I, I don't use the app. So I don't use the app because I have almost every credit card that gets me into the lounges. So, but if you don't travel as much as I do, um, then you want to check out this app because they will sell you a, you don't need a membership for these lounges, which you normally do, and you don't need elite status, or you don't need a first-class ticket, which requ usually required for most airport lounges and airline clubs. So, but and you pay a fee for Lounge Buddy, I presume, you right? No, you pay a fee for whatever lounge you're going to access. Oh, you pay so, it as you go in. Exactly. Oh. So, I just they don't have one in San Francisco. I just looked that up for you. They're mostly international. Oh, just, are they like lounge, lounge buddy lounges? They're not like the Delta no, Lounge. No, 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 they're they are they are the Delta lounges. They are the um, whatever. I'm looking at one for LAX. They have the Alaska Airlines. I see. Um, so they've lounge. negotiated a deal. They negotiate a deal, Got and you can it. buy it in advance because sometimes, especially this Alaska Airlines lounge, it can be full, and they won't even let people in if you have a membership. Right. Um, but obviously, the best way to get into these is to get a certain credit card, and there's all different credit cards depending on which lounges. I get the I have the American Express Platinum for the Centurion lounges and the Delta lounges. I have the City um, American Airlines card to get into the Admiral Club's lounges. I have the uh, Chase Sapphire to get into the Priority Club lounges, and uh, and I have a, one more. I can't even think of it. But that's a good tip, though, for people who have to travel a lot, business travelers and so forth. Because even if you're not flying business or first class, it's really nice. Because always we spend time in the airport. That's the worst part of travel is waiting in the airport. Might as well make it a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, the way to master travel is to you know get TSA pre, get clear, yeah. um, get um, treat yourself, global entry, and then get into these lounges. Yeah. But another great perk about these lounges is that let's say let's say I'm on a flight, American Airlines flight, and my flight is canceled. You know, the first thing I do is I make a beeline to that lounge the Admiral's Club Lounge, while I'm on the phone with American, but sometimes it's usually, the hold could be so long that by the time I get to the Admiral's Club Lounge, I can speak to a reservation agent in there, and they call them the American Angels in there. And every airline club lounge has the same thing. The 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 agents can really work magic there, although these computer systems are starting to mess with them. But that's what you want to do. If, they're, if your flight is canceled, you do not wait around – you don't sit around and wait in this long line. You go to the lounge and you get on the phone or you even take to Twitter sometimes, depending on, you know, if it's bad weather and there's a lot of people delayed. But that is one of the secrets. And that's worth the fee for these lounges. So sure. most most of these lounges, the major airlines will sell you a fee, you know, like $59. Or you I think can get in if you now. pay for it. 
Some of them. Yeah. So American Airlines, and depending on the city, uh, it's about fifty nine dollars. But um, see, that's not, all it's not worth it for me for a stale tuna sandwich with the cut with the crust cut off well, and, a, and an orange well, juice. But if it would help me well, get new for the next flight, have, that would be good. Food. A lot of them don't even have food like that. It's either just snacks like carrot steaks or yeah. uh, chips, yeah. unless you're in the first class lounge. But again, it's worth it to have access to these, to quiet, quiet working space, and also to be able to um, have access to these agents and not wait in any long lines. So, so that's, that's why I'm a fan of them. There's your your app, which is Lounge Buddy, iOS and Android. Do you I just a- put it on. Uh, I just tweeted it, and I'm actually going to put them both in the show notes because my website is a crazy one. Yeah. Um, it's called, it's called, let me look and see what it's exactly called. I just put it in the show notes as well, the chat room. Uh, wing, it's called wingwalkdisplays.co.uk. So this is, someone, I don't know why I even brought this up, but someone asked me like, you know, what's the craziest thing you can do on an airplane? So I did some research and it looks like the only place you can do it is in the UK. There's You're two spots. You're not walk on the wing, are you? I am not, but you are. Wallingford what? And you're there. <laughs> What? You can Promoting. actually do this? Yes, we want to put a webcam on your head and see if you can do it. Um, I would do that. Would you really? Yeah. You're, you're, you're like strapped, you're strapped you're, in on a biplane, on the top of a biplane. You can't fall and, off, right? Well, you're not. Obviously, no, you're not supposed to. But You're not supposed to. <laughs> okay. That They've doesn't... been in business for a while. Uh, they use a 1940s. Have they lost anybody? Biplane. 1940s no, biplane. Uh, it's beautiful. But there used to be one in Washington State here that used to do it, but they don't do it anymore, uh, uh, I would think, because insurance laws. But you know what in I the do? UK, I would pay for this, and then they'd be up, and I presume that at some point they say, okay, climb out on the wing now. Oh, no, no. They strapped you in, I think, on takeoff. They take off with you on the wing? Yeah, that's the only way it would Lisa, work. Lisa says she's doing it. But she's it's, jumped, it, she's jumped it, out of a perfectly good airplane with a parachute on, so this well, is nothing for her. Yeah. And if I was going to do this, I actually would put a parachute on just in case. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like happen. these people are wearing shoots. Yeah, it does not look like that. No. But it's 10 minutes long. It's about $500. But if you're into adventure, thrill-seeking, no this kidding. is the That's thing to do. Crazy. But you will not see me doing it. But it would be great to is see it, Lisa. Is it in uh, the UK only? I guess it is. It's the only place I've been able to find it. I did some yeah. research. Again, it was in Washington State a few years ago, but no longer. That I that their website's down and it's, and, and their number I called does not work. They do give you goggles, but there's nothing well, to I, keep the bugs from hitting your teeth. Yeah, there's video on their website. Uh, Crazy, it's, just, it's insane. I know, and I don't think. I, I hope not too many of your listeners would want to do it, but you never know out there. And, I, and actually, when I wrote about it, I had it was pretty popular, so that's why I'm mentioning it. JohnnyJet.com. That's the website. You go there, you can find out all about the crazy stuff Johnny does. I think you should. You you know you you conquered your fear of flying. Now conquer your fear of wing walking, Johnny. That takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> actually, it looks like a comfy chair. You're kind of sitting down. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, you're out there in the uh, in the air. I wonder how fast they're going. Cause yeah, his yeah his face you're looks going, yeah you're probably going 100 miles an hour. Well, Lisa says she'll and they're do going it. upside down. No way. There's not a chance. <laughs> I would do this. Not a chance. Oh, I, I didn't realize right, it. Johnny. Johnnyjet.com. That's the website. Go there. You can read more of Johnny's great stuff. Follow him on Twitter and Instagram too. And he's always a welcome guest here on the uh, Tech Guy program. <laughs> I'm glad you're home. Are you going to stay home for a little bit? Uh, for a couple of days. Two days. That's that's Johnny for you. Safe travels. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. This is great. This is the craziest, craziest thing you've ever done. Look at that. Craziest. You're wild, Mr. Johnny. But Lisa so, came running in and says she wants to do it. Wow, I'm really impressed. She's a daredevil. I, uh... No, she's a daredevil. I won't even yeah. ride a roller coaster, so it seems unlikely I, I, that I would, I would do this. I would chip in for her to do this if she puts a GoPro camera on her head. Oh, I'd do it with a GoPro. She'd do it with a GoPro. Good, let's do it. I'll I'll start the funding. We don't have no, we'll, we'll pay for it. Not, we should, you don't have to raise money. <laughs> but but you have to be where in the UK? It's Wallingford or or Yorkshire. Oh wow! So it's not even like near London. Yeah, I had to look up. We'll make a trip. I want to go back. I love the UK. We, I want to go anyway. Okay. 
So uh, we'll I make- almost did not mention this because I was like, I don't know, but it's just so out there. I figured, what the heck? <laughs> I'm putting the, the GoPro. I got the GoPro Fusion. I'm putting the GoPro Fusion on her head. <laughs> yeah, I have it here because we're going to do some stuff with it today to to tax the. Uh, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed that she wants to do like it. That. <laughs> or just hold it like. No, you'd lose it. No, I'm not going to do that. Are you nuts? Are you going to fly in the plane with me? No, I'm going to watch from the ground and I'm make sure, sure your insurance <laughs> is up to date. I'm sure part of the package is you have video from all the cameras on the plane. Right, obviously. Well, and, but, it'd be fun to have but it'd be fun to have one on your head. Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah. I think it's a I think it's a two seater, so you could be in the back seat, which I don't know. No, if I no, no. The pilot is in the other seat. Somebody's no, flying the plane, I Johnny. That, but there's but I'm not talking about. Oh, the you seat don't. You on start wing. on the wing. That's right. You're not a passenger exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if if you're lucky, you land on the wing as well. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Lisa, are you? Where'd she go? Oh. They wearing parachutes. No, they're not wearing parachutes in these videos. Wow. Nice. Hey. All right, Johnny. Thank you. Have a good, good week. One. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Whew. 8888. Ask Leo the phone number as we talk high tech. And back to the lines we go. Line one, Michael Escondido, California. Hello, Michael. Well, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm all right, my friend. Hey, I just want to start off by saying I really appreciate you uh, as an educator myself, a professional educator. I appreciate you having this show and just trying to uh, educate the rest of us that maybe aren't, uh, you know, uh, uh, leaning towards the tech side. Thank you. Uh, That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. And thank you for being an educator. I think there is no more important job, is there? As do I. Well, my question is this. Uh, Obviously, as an educator, um, I do. Obviously, I do have some... Uh, some tech competency, uh, but I got a 15 year old son, mm. and he just finished ninth grade. Nice. And after getting straight A's, the, the spring of eighth year, and and the, in his first year of freshman, uh, I'd like to reward him and just say, hey, you know, other than verbally and some of the other things I do, uh, he's a gamer. He plays Overwatch, he plays Paladin, he plays Rainbow Siege Six, and uh, I'd like to uh, you know invest in him and get him a decent gaming computer and. Me just not being a gamer, you know, a computer gaming person, I just like maybe some uh, guidelines to start off to get him a decent unit. And I'd like to think that, uh, Lord willing, I could get him something decent somewhere north of 1200 but south of $2,000. You can absolutely do that. That's a, that's a good price point. Uh, the deal is I wouldn't get a laptop. I would get a desktop. Okay. Uh, you're going to pay more for a laptop, and it's not going to be as fast. Um, right. I mean, some of the some of the pros, I would say, the graphics, the responsiveness, and the battery life. Yeah, well, that the battery life is not an issue on the desktop. Okay. Uh, the reason is the main, the key element in a gaming system is the graphics processor unit. They call it the GPU. You've heard of the CPU. That's the the brains, the Intel chip. But the NVIDIA graphics processing unit is really what makes it a good device. I'll tell you what we got our fifteen year old son. By the way. My strong suggestion is don't let him put it in his bedroom. He'll want to. Oh, I know. Put it in the he public already, area, the living room. So yeah, at least. He things up till zero dark thirty in the morning. So exactly. I, I make him play, play in my room, and I have a shutdown time that he has. That's to a good idea. That's a good idea. I got him an Asus A S U S, and it's they call it the Republic of Gaming R O G. So they have a bunch of R O G gaming machines that I think are reasonably priced and very powerful. Uh, I, I got them the G20CI, but there are, you can look and, and, and pick the one you want. Your, the graphics card, as I said, is going to be the most important part. You're going to want to probably uh, an NVIDIA, uh, I would say a GTX 1060 or better. Uh, the 1080 is kind of the t- top of the line. So are you asking? Yeah, he, he he's going to want a GeForce uh, card. He he knows this already. He's going to want yeah. yeah the uh, the one I got my son has a 1080. That's their kind of high end, but you can get a 1060 for a little bit less. And for the games you described, those would be adequate. Um, but but you know what happens with games? They get more and more challenging to the hardware. The hard that's what's driving video game hardware. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
I do because he plays in my room. Sometimes I'll spend an hour or two just watching him, and I hear the people that get put on his team. He's playing on a console, and they're they're routinely calling, "Hey, good good job." Oh, nice. That means so I know he and he talks about look, dude, you can see the difference in graphics. So I know he's good at it. He's committed, and I kind of look at this as a way, you know, when I was a teenager, no one thought that these skateboarders could turn a, a career out of good point. Good and point. He kept skateboarding at 15, 16 years old. And so I kind of, um, pretty much came this in my own luck. When we were teenagers, no one thought this surfing and skateboarding can make a living. Or you're a very, you're, you know what? He's a lucky guy. I hope he appreciates it. You're a very open minded dad. So I see this is the same thing. These kids are going off. They're having these tournaments in LA that he watches. Yeah. Two videos every day. So I want to support him. And like I said, uh, he, he, he turned a corner the spring of eighth grade. And Good for you know, him. Yeah. yeah, and I do think it's important that you know you keep you monitor the use because it is very tempting. It's yeah. addictive, and it's not his fault. It's addictive, and he might end up staying up all night playing Overwatch. I can understand that. I might have done that myself once or twice. <laughs> so uh, it's probably a good idea to have it in your room. I think that's a great idea. But I th I think it's nice to support him. And of course, what you want also is maybe he becomes interested in computers and technology. Maybe he shows an interest in other things like learning how to code or learning how to run networks. All of this stuff comes along with it. So uh, yeah, I, I think this is not a I, – I, I'm with you. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think this is part of the his his generation. Oh, so, yeah. And like I said, the ones that stay on top of it and really commit, just like the things we committed to, yeah. you know, they can take it as far as they want. Yeah. Well, I would take a look at their Republic of Gaming systems. There's a pretty broad price range. You said under 2000 between 1200 and, say, 1800 or 1900 You should easily be able to do that. Remember to save a little money for the monitor. He's going to want a nice monitor. Fortunately, monitors have come down a lot. Um, and, well, you should talk to him. I mean, Asus sells monitors, so you can get a, a complete system from them. He may want one of these big widescreen curved monitors <laughs> they're really nice uh, they, some of them are using these double monitors uh, set up yeah right? that's that's what he's going to want the 34 inch curved monitor that you'll have to see if you want to spend the money on that uh i yeah. think you that's going to add to it but not as much as it used to be it used to be a good monitor was a thousand bucks they're now down well under 500 dollars. so i think you'll be able to get it the, the the one i got my son is uh oculus ready it means he can run the oculus rift vr i don't know if your son's into that or not but that's something to keep in mind uh as well it's it what's nice is it's very compact it's beautiful looking you won't mind having it there it's not too noisy asus uh, sells monitors so you can get a, a appropriate monitor keyboard and mouse to go along with it i think they've done a very good job with their gaming line so that's uh, and it was as i said it's where, where i put my money after uh, after doing some research so I think. Okay, but, so would you, I mean, would I go? Would you recommend Best Buy, or is there other vehicles? Or, or, oh, you can get it online. Uh, Best Buy's fine. Uh, although I think online you might do a little bit better. I did it online. Um, Amazon sells these. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think the problem with going to Best Buy is they they're going to steer you in directions right. that they're yeah. interested in. Um, I'm looking at the Asus uh, GR8. Uh, VR ready mini gaming desktop. It has an i7 and a GeForce 1060. As I said, a little bit slower, but fine. That's 1135 from Amazon. And then you can get a. That means it's that leaves you some budget for a decent monitor and uh, keep. And it comes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It comes with keyboard and mouse. Um, yeah, look look on uh, look on Amazon. They have all of these. The uh, there's a 27 inch curved monitor. Uh, the Asus ROG Strikes is three hundred thirty-five bucks, so now you're now you're about sixteen hundred dollars uh, all in. Well, that's in. That's just for me. Oh, yeah. One or two pitfalls I might that maybe it's not not in a in a in a, in a description. Well, or, one of the reasons you, know, you get these uh, is they're not going to underpower them because they know you're going to use them for gaming. So it's not, it's going to have in this case it's eight gigs of RAM. Uh, I would like to see sixteen, but eight's enough. Um, you, it's going to be equipped appropriately. It's not going to be a four gigabyte because that would be not enough for gaming. You'd want at least eight gigs. I would like 16 gigs of RAM. Hard drive size is not critical. Um, most of them will come with <coughs> will come with half a terabyte. Terabyte would be nice. A little more expensive. It's really going to come down to price. 
<clears throat> so, uh, but but it, but I think anything that ASUS says, this is a, an ROG gaming system is going to be is going to be a, a good starting point. You're, you're not going to miss out. So I go if I go with this GTX 1080, you think that'll? Well, the 1080 is even better. The 1060 will save you some money if you can afford a 1080. Your son will love you for an extra five minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the call. You're a good dad. I, I think a lot of dads are listening going, I'm not giving the kid a gaming machine. I'll never see him again. But it is part of his life, right? And it's something he loves. And if he's doing good work, he's staying, keeping his grades up. And you know what's great about giving him something like this? It gives you something you could take away if the grades go down. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Oh, it's time. Talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We can talk smartphones. We can talk smartwatches. We can talk Intel i9 processors, MacBook Pros, Windows, Surface Goes, all of that. 8888-ASK-LEO is my phone number. 8-5536. Uh, That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you can still call. But you have to call uh, using Skype or something like that. 8888-ASK-LEO. Back to the phones we go. Line to Pat in Victorville, California. Hi, Pat. Hey, Leo. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Hey, I listen to you all the time. I called you once to uh, tell you that I was going out of uh, Copenhagen up to uh, St. Petersburg. And I was going to ask you... Uh, what I should look at when I was there, but I couldn't get through. <laughs> oh, rats. Well, what did you look at while you were there? Did you have fun? Oh, I had a great time. Isn't that a nice trip? Yeah, really, yeah I've done that yeah, twice that now. Trip. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so really? beautiful. St. Petersburg, something. Did you get to see the Hermitage Museum? Yeah. I, Catherine's did, Palace. Uh, yeah, we did one of the excursions through the ship. So nice, they nice. Us, it was like a two-day trip on a bus. Oh, so, wow. Wow. You can get to Moscow and back in that time. Yeah, so we were out and about. So it was actually really fun. Nice. Well, what can I do for you today? Hey, I've got a fifth wheel trailer, and uh, I cannot see with the mirrors extended all the way out. I cannot see the cops roaring up behind me. So. <laughs> you want cameras? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I need a. I need some type of camera that I can put on there that I can look behind me. But online, I was noticing they go all the way from forty nine ninety five to eight hundred dollars. I don't want to. Sp I like to spend somewhere around uh, maybe one hundred and fifty. <laughs> you, yeah, months. you shouldn't. The cameras are cheap. Really, the, where you spend money uh, is on the software, depending on how good that is, and how it's connected. Because yeah, well, what, it's what you it's got to be wireless. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be on the back of the the truck, right? All the way in the back. Yeah, it's in the back of the trailer, all the way at the and, very, and the very trailer. Back. And you it, then there's now, of course, you do have a connection because you have your lights back there, right? So, yeah, yeah. there yeah, might be a way to connect it. The power. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but there are a number of cameras that use uh, Bluetooth. Is probably not going to work either. It's far enough back that it's probably not going to work. So yep. you may be getting a more expensive camera just because of the uh, nature of this. You're gonna, you're not. It's not going to be mounted in the cab. It's going to be back on the trailer, huh? Yeah, it's going to be in the very back of the trailer. Yeah. It's going to be probably uh, 35 feet from the the monitor on the dash. Yeah. Uh, well, there certainly are um, Wi-Fi uh, cameras that'll do this. I'm not <clears throat> really familiar with them because. Uh, most of the time, what you're, yeah, I mean, on a regular uh, vehicle, you're going to have a way to get it connected through. We had, um, we had a backup camera. Actually, this might, if I can remember the name of it, it was a backup camera that fit onto the license plate. It was a, it was a frame for the license plate, and um, I'm, I think that actually did use a wireless connection. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing is, is if there's somebody directly behind me, I want to be able to look over the top of them. So it's got to be up above, up, you know, up near the roof. So I can uh, look, okay. you know, part way down this, you know, a half a mile down the street. Right. So. 
Well, um, I didn't want some, yeah, I didn't want some tailgater <clears throat> right up against me, and all I could see is his license plate, you know. So yeah, and most of these, the way they work is your phone becomes the screen. Yeah. So well, I was gonna use I was gonna use a tablet that I have. Oh, tablet works same way. So the one I was thinking of, the Esky, but that is actually attached to a frame for the license plate. But there are others that you could screw into, you know, above the, the doors on the uh, trailer, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. 4U cam, the number 4, UCAM. It's a Wi-Fi backup camera. And what you want is what's called a backup camera because it's not you're not using it for backing up, but it's something off the rear uh, yeah. of, of the truck. It connects. It needs 12 volt power, but I presume because you can get power to your lights, you've got some way to connect up to that, right? Oh yeah, the trailer's got 12 volt power. All right. You know, for when I'm out in the rough, it's it's actually a a toy trailer, so it's got a big giant door in the back, to, so you can put the razor in there. Got it. But um, <laughs> it's a toy trailer. You have toys in the back there. <laughs> so pile p y p y l e makes these as well as esky e s k y. They're not expensive. All four of the ones I just described are under a hundred dollars. They all use Wi Fi. Okay. Uh, and I think Wi Fi would work. Um, you need an iOS or Android device. You're going to put an app on the, the device, and it's going mm -hmm. to basically join the camera. Is going to you're going to join the camera's Wi Fi signal. Uh, the only challenge is going to be Wi Fi going through the metal of that trailer. You know, might be a little bit challenging. So you want to probably put it as close to the top as you can so that it can skip over the top and of course the other thing you want to look for and all of these uh, that i'm looking at are ip66 or better rated so they're not they're waterproof you don't obviously it's going to be out there in the in the water yeah so okay. uh i would i would take a look at that for you for you cam that's 99 dollars. it's a a backup camera you could it now it's it's designed for attaching to a license plate but but it could be it could be attached anywhere. It doesn't have to be there, and it gives you a 110 degree wide angle. So if you're up on top of the up at the top of the trailer, you'll have a very good view of the road behind you. It has night vision. That's something else you want because at night you don't want to just see headlights. You'd like to see something else besides yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of this is a fairly common uh, thing. A lot of people in older cars want backup cameras. You know, we get used to it. I don't. I don't know if I could back up anymore if I had to look over my shoulder. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So backup cameras are probably the least expensive, most common choice for this. <clears throat> so there you go. So the so what basically happens is the camera becomes a Wi-Fi access point. And your phone or your tablet will join that Wi-Fi access point. And at that point, the app will say, ah, I see the camera and show it to you the whole time. And that's, that seems yeah. like a sensible uh, way to do this. Uh, the only issue is going to be how strong the Wi-Fi is and if it's going to get over the top. And that's probably, uh, you know, make sure where you buy it. If you buy it on Amazon, they have a good return policy. Make sure whoever does, might be, you might be able to have to return it um, if uh, if you can't get through the if the Wi-Fi can't get through yeah. the trailer, yeah. All right. Well, okay. I think it's a good idea. It's yeah, a great idea. Said, yeah, the first one you said was for you cam. For I'm looking on Amazon, ninety nine bucks for you cam Wi-Fi backup camera for iPhone, iPad, and Android. It's called At the number four, the letter U C A M, all one word. Okay, I'll look that up on my computer. Yep. Nice right, to talk man. to you. Take care. Have fun with your toys. He's got a trailer full of toys. Jet skis, motorboats. I don't know what's in there. Razor scooters. <laughs> I love it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Let's take a little teeny weeny break. <clears throat> when we come back, more of your calls. We'll talk high tech. Stay right here. No, Chumley, I completely disagree now, having played with this i9. Uh, I think that uh, the people who are quick to brand this problematic are not probably, you know, there's certain use cases where, would you know, any laptop chip is going to be a problem. But the i9 is fantastic. <clears throat> I am getting such great performance. Yeah, just to sign up for the temporary, uh, you know, to be notified, they'll get you another one. 
another molecule soon. But so I disagree, Chumley, and I'm sitting here in front of an I-9, and I'm very, very happy. <clears throat> We're going to do on the new screensavers, I have a, a final cut uh, project we'll compress. I'll show you what happens with long-term, uh, you know, hard working of the processor. Of course, it, it gets hot and slows down. That's going to happen. But the, most of the stuff I'm doing, uh, compiling software, um, processing photos in Lightroom, which is a pig on any other machine I've used. It's just unusable. It's great. It's super fast. I'm watching the processor. It's, 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 it's clocking up to 4 gigahertz and higher, and it's, the thermals are not causing problems. So the kinds of things most people do, which are, which are somewhat bursty, uh, the i9 can handle quite well. But nothing in a laptop is going to handle half an hour of 100%. On the GPU and CPU, nothing's gonna. You know, you're gonna have to slow down. There's just no way around that, and I think that's an unreasonable expectation if that's what people uh, want. <clears throat> the i9 is. Uh, I think it was. It's not a whole lot faster. I think it's a few hundred megahertz faster than the i7, but it's. Uh, you know, so the six cores are a big part of this as well, and you know, you're not going to see the benefit unless you have multi-core programs except that the single core clock speed is faster than anything else out there so you definitely see that i'll show we'll show you i've got the uh <clears throat> i got the um uh, before intel discontin discontinued it i have the intel uh, cpu gadget and so we'll be able to show exactly what happens and when it you know when it's a problem when it's not a problem it's not it's not always a problem <clears throat> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo the phone number. Uh, if you want to talk high tech, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for you. It's kind of a user group of the airwaves, right? So it's not just me. We've got the hundreds of people in the chat room. We've got all the people listening. We've got a great website. It's free, uh, wide open, good search, techguylabs.com. Maybe I can't answer every question. In fact, I haven't been able to answer a lot of questions today. They've been some tough ones. But, uh, you know, between, between all of us, we, we're going to figure it out. We'll figure it out for you. We'll help you. Dave on the line from Duluth, Minnesota. Hello, Dave. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for calling. Okay. What can I do for you, sir? Well, I got this uh, HP 6700 printer. And... Um, it keeps disconnecting from the router modem. I thought the modem was a problem because it was like five years old. So I bought a new one in Aries. And uh, it does the same thing. You, you go to print something and it says no connection to the printer. Well, you reset the modem, it prints that one. And then the next one, same thing, no connection to the printer. So I've tried several uh, HP um, fixes online and none of those, everything says it's working fine. Hmm. So... <clears throat> your router, your modem work with everything else. You can still surf the web and all of that. It's just the printer itself. That's correct. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I, there's not much I can say except there's something wrong with the printer. <laughs> 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 because I don't, I don't know what's wrong with the printer. You've, you've tried a few things. Um, it's not unusual, by the way. Printers are not notoriously... Uh, well known for their ability to do Wi-Fi, uh, it should stay connected all the time. Um, some, you know, well, with, uh, go ahead. I tried a wired connection, and uh, and it did the same thing with wired. It did the same thing with wired. Oh, that's yeah. interesting because that eliminates a whole category of solutions I was going to offer you. Because Wi-Fi is, you know, a funny thing. It's not. It's sometimes it looks like it's not there. A printer has to be fairly tolerant. To print to Wi-Fi, it has to, you know, if it, I can't see it, oh, I can see it now, that kind of thing. And as we've used more and more devices in our house with Wi-Fi, as your neighbor's Wi-Fi gets stronger, it's not unusual for Wi-Fi connectivity to be kind of spotty. But if it's still happening with Ethernet, directly connected with Ethernet, hmm, that's an interesting well, got, conundrum. Well, I've got a TV right next to it, and I've got uh, two cordless telephones at the desk, and I thought moving those away. Well, help. yeah, for Wi-Fi, yeah, but 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 you try the Ethernet, and the Ethernet's going into your router. That's correct. And uh, and does it sometimes work with Ethernet, or does it never work with Ethernet? 
Every time you reboot it, it works for the Okay, okay. so it works for a little while and it stops. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, that sounds like... How old is the printer? Well, the printer's about five or six years yeah. old. Yeah. It sounds like something's anywhere. gone wrong with the uh, network connectivity in the printer. Um, and, you know, there's not it's not an easy thing to fix. I don't know if you've called HP or not, but I would guess something that old, they're not they're not going to offer any uh, warranty service uh, or even paid service for it. They're just going to say, yeah, it's worn out. You should get a new one. <laughs> I do their online. I have their online uh, fixed printing program, and that tells me that, everything's fine. But yeah. It's no, it's definitely something wrong with the, the network. Con so it's not just Wi-Fi. It's hardwired, which means there's something wrong with the network card in the printer. These things fail. <laughs> Six years. May it just broke. It's hard for me from a distance, obviously, to diagnose it. But from what you've told me, uh, you were smart to try the wired just to see if it was a Wi-Fi problem. Because, yeah, with with the cordless phones and the TV, there's all sorts of wireless noise going on there. But it's still happening. Even when your Ethernet plugged in, that means it's the network card in the printer that's messed up. Um, if you can, you know, check and see if there's new firmware, I would download it. Uh, even if there isn't. if you're Sometimes you can redo the firmware and something and that fixes these things. So even if there isn't. But I have to be honest with you. Printer's price has gone down a lot in the last six years. You probably get an e a, as good or better printer for not too much money. And I think that's most likely your best bet at this point. Your networking is, is flaky. That's frustrating, isn't it? You know, check if, see if there's a firmware update. Call HP if you're, if you're in the mood to be on hold for a while. Of course, we kept you on hold for a long time too, didn't we? But it does sound like the printer. Noah in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Noah. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so we recently picked up a new sound bar for our like home theater setup. And we have Google Homes and Google Home Minis throughout our entire house. And we have Chromecasts, too. So we just say, hello, Google, turn on the living room TV. And it turns on the TV and starts up the Chrome and switches to the Chromecast input. But the one thing we're having troubles with is we still have to manually turn on our sound bar. Oh. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah. I was so impressed. Yeah. And it, so all, the device can only turn on the things it can turn on. And if it doesn't know about the sound bar, it's not going to be able to turn it on. How did you set it up with the TV? Did it, does it, uh, did we have a newer smart TV with like the built in, like controlled by HDMI. It has cast. Oh, oh, I see. All right. Yeah, so why don't you? Do, why is the soundbar getting turned off? I guess would be the first question. Why don't you just leave well, it on? It auto turns itself off. Oh darn it! Yeah, I know. Just to save power, huh? Yeah, and I mean, I would keep it on all the time if. Yeah, I mean, it's not pulling any juice when it's not playing any sound. Yeah, it's literally illuminating an LED. Yeah, and there's no way. Who makes the soundbar? Oh goodness! It is an odd company I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, so look in the look in the manual and see if there's any way you can disable the power down mode. You know, maybe they call it eco mode or something like that. If you can, if you could disable that, maybe um, maybe that would be the solution. I, I, uh, okay. The manufacturer is Danby, I believe. Danby. All right, I know them. Now here's a good idea from Joe in our chat room. I like this one. Joe says. Well, here's the question. If the sound bar powers on automatically when, it's, when, it, when it gets powered up, you could test this by unplugging it and plugging it in. Does it come on when you plug it in? Then you could get a smart plug for the sound oh, bar <clears throat> and have the Google Assistant turn the smart plug on. But what, before you do that, test to see if, and I bet it does, by the way, if the sound bar is unplugged and you plug it in, does it come on? It doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't. Curse you, Danby. Curse you and all you Danby folk. Hmm. Well, that was a good a good idea, Joe. <laughs> I don't know if this house has Bluetooth built in, so yeah. I don't think I can wake it via Bluetooth, though. Probably not. Man, why does it go to sleep? I wish I knew. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's trying to save you a little juice, but uh, it seems like... Hmm. Yeah, so these uh, these uh, home assistants, these uh, smart home devices really only work with the things they work with. And if it doesn't know about the Danby soundbar, it's not going to be able to turn it on. 
Uh, does the um, does the remote does it come with a remote? The soundbar. Yeah. All right. So the remote is probably infrared. Yeah. So that's another way you can do this. In fact, this might be a great solution in general. Something Harmony makes called the Hub. It's under a hundred bucks. The Harmony Hub, and it has infrared, so it can control any device that has an infrared remote control, including your Danby. And it can be controlled by your Google Home. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So that's, if, it, if you have a, wire, a wireless remote that does infrared, which almost all remotes do, uh, that would be an easy thing to fix. You just need to have the Harmony Hub. Now, before you buy it, you might check the Harmony websites from Logitech and make sure that it supports this. But the Harmony has been around for so long, there's hardly, I've never found a device it doesn't know about. But it, and even if it doesn't, you can sometimes train it. But what you'll essentially be doing is talking to the hub, and the hub will turn on the things that you need to get the same All result. Right. So that's another way to do it. A question similar to this. We have a Samsung TV in my parents' room, and we can turn it on with Google Assistant, but we can't turn it off with Google Assistant. <laughs> Would the hub kind of take care of that too? Well, you know, the hub's designed for a, for a AV setup. So what what is it that won't turn on and off the TV? It won't turn the TV off. Off. It, it only on turns it on. on. Yeah, the hub might do a better job with it. If you get one... Before you, you know, you can only set it up in one place because it has to be line of sight to all the devices. That's infrared as yeah. light. But you could try it. You could quickly bring it in your parents' room and see if it, if it can turn it off and on. That's interesting. It can only turn it on but not off. And it's also got the, like, smart HDMI port. So I don't understand because, like, our Samsung TV we have in the living room, it works fine with. It'll turn it on. Yeah, it so what it's, what it's using is a, a technology called CEC. And the problem with CEC, and they have different different companies have different names uh, for it, um, but the problem with it is, is, you know, stands for Consumer Electronics Control. And the problem with it is a very loose specification, and and CEC has never worked well. And so it sounds like the CEC can turn the TV on, but the TV, the TV can't be turned off by CEC. Victor's has yeah. a solution. What is it, Victor? Right. Is that TV have an on or off switch, or is it one switch that turns it on, turns it off, on? It off. has this weird like nubbin. It's it's like a four way directional like nub sticking out of the bottom of the TV. This is not a Dan B TV, too, is it? It is not. <laughs> I think I think Dan B is a uh, a ca house brand of somebody. Yeah, it's at a appliances. Okay. Yeah, my dad picked it up at like ABC yeah, Warehouse. Yeah, it's very cheap. With, yeah. With him, so I yeah. Got dad, Danby's a leader in refrigeration and specialty appliances. Oh boy! <laughs> but they do make a sound bar. <laughs> they also make uh, dehumidifiers, dryers, and ice makers. So. Because before he would have went, I would have said, "Hey, <laughs> let's look for one." If it's happens. if it's a Danby, it damn be. Um. So I think it, I don't know if it'll work, but you're going to get one anyway and you could try it. it so there's a distinction between some TVs, older TVs have on and off switches, two distinct switches, but most TVs it's a toggle. But I don't know why the CEC isn't working to turn the TV off, except that it, you know, whoever made that TV said, oh, you know, we'll turn it on, but why would they ever want to turn it off? I don't know. Well, they're both Samsung TVs. No. Oh. They both have CEC. But the slightly older, by I think a year TV, can't turn it off. Isn't that weird? Look in the off. settings. Look in the settings. There may be something in there. CEC is such a mess. Yeah. It's just a nightmare. Um, I was just glad that it worked at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. You're obviously the, the home tech guy, Noah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Next time, don't let Dad leave home without you. Oh, I know. <laughs> hey, it's nice to talk to you, Noah. Take care. Thank you very much. All right. 
8888 ask leo if you're on the line hang on the line we got another half hour on the radio but i'm going to keep answering calls for another hour after that we're uh, recording ahead for a future episode where i'll be on vacation so you can help me out if you keep those uh, phones ringing 8888 ask leo jerry costa mesa california hi jerry hello jerry 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 i hear somebody Jerry? Jerry, are you there? Should we should we mess with Jerry? Help me! Help me! I'm trapped in the phone! Help me! Help me! <laughs> There's Jerry. Hi, Jerry. He's laughing, but he's not talking. All right, well, I can't help you then. Mimi, Orange County, California. Hi, Mimi. Well, hi. How are you, Leah? I'm good. How are you? Just fine. I'm so glad to get through. Well, I am glad you did too. What can what can I, really I do? I really like you? your show. Thank you. Um, I'm not a big tech person because I work outdoors all day. So, um, what do you do that you work outdoors all day? I would rather be doing that than sit in front of a computer all day. <laughs> I know, but in the hot sun, um, are you? I, I oh, deliver mail. <laughs> oh, you're a mail carrier. Yes, I am. My favorite people in the world. Why, thanks. Yes. You know, I don't know why. It's ever since I've been a kid, I've loved the mail carrier. I always have a great relationship with them. And I think it's because when you're a kid, the mail carrier doesn't bring bills. No. Nope. The mail carrier brings presents. <laughs> it's only when you're a grown-up that the mail carrier starts bringing you things you don't want. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's both. Now it's bills and good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I get lots of good stuff from my mail carrier. So what can I do to help you with your technology? Well, just recently... I invested in a Ring Video Doorbell 2. I don't, I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to use because I do not have internet at home. And I don't oh, have yeah. a computer at home. Oh, uh, yeah. See, this is, a, by the way, they're sponsors. So, uh, But this is a, what we call an Internet of Things device. It, it needs internet. It needs Wi-Fi or it won't do anything. I mean, it'll ring the doorbell. But there's no point in having a camera and a speaker and all that stuff because it, exactly. it won't do any of that. Do you have a smartphone? I do, and that's what my question was. Um, do I absolutely have to have internet at home? Yeah. Or do I have to, or can I use it um, on a second cell phone that I leave at home? Well, yeah, you could. <laughs> that seems like an expensive thing, but you could do that. Yeah, it has to have Wi-Fi of some kind, and that Wi-Fi doesn't have to come from an internet service provider. It could come from a wireless cellular phone. Sure, you put the phone in hotspot mode. That would set up, you'd have to keep the phone plugged in, obviously, because it's going to drain the battery. That would set up a Wi-Fi network. Put it close because these hotspot phones don't go very far. But if it's close to the doorbell, the doorbell then, when you set it up, it's got a little orange button on the back. You press it. It says, uh, oh, I see some Wi-Fi. Is this it? And you, Yeah, you set it all up. And, it, and it'll just work. I mean, it's a little weird because... Yeah, but is it, it because I don't have, I feel like um, it, having internet service it's thirty dollars a month, and I just—I mean, at least, right? But that cell phone's not free. It's going to cost you that much no. for for wife for internet on the cell phone. Do you think so? Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's hard to get a cell phone working for less than thirty bucks a month. Yeah, well, I was trying to see if I could, you know, be thrifty and try to maybe get another phone for my on my plan, which I already have another phone. I already yeah. have an extra. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to end up costing you similar. You, you know what you could do? Oh. Ask your neighbors. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, oh. That, was, that, that did cross my mind. No, I'm serious. I mean, don't steal it from them, but say, hey, look, I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't want Wi-Fi. I can't afford Wi-Fi. But I, I would like my door. And by the way, neighbor, this will help you because the video will capture people in the neighborhood doing bad things. It's part of the deal. So all and it doesn't use a lot of bandwidth because it's only the camera's only sending when you you know say hey, hey what's going on or it senses movement it's not sending all the time see if you can all I, you know if you're close enough to your neighbor it means you have to be within 100 feet of your neighbor if, yeah. but if you're close yeah. enough to your neighbor just say if you live in an apartment this shouldn't be a problem at all and if you're in a house then you, you know it's got to be fairly close say i just want to see if i could see your wi-fi I will. I promise you, I won't use it for anything but the doorbell. And and by the way, I'll share the doorbell picture with you so you can see how the neighborhood's going. That's true. Yeah, I could do. I could 
potentially do that. I just wanted to get your opinion. You're a mailman. Everybody should trust you. You're a, a uniformed employee of the federal government. Yes. It's not me. I don't trust. It's not us. I, I, there's a, it's a busy street. Your, your neighbors should trust you, though. Well, you yeah. as a mailman know that one of the real benefits of a camera doorbell is package thieves. Yeah, I know. People come and they steal. If, you know, it's a. that's one of the best things about these video doorbells is you can keep an eye on things out there. And it and it yes, sends you a notification on your phone when somebody rings your doorbell, but also when somebody just comes up the path, you know. And you could set where the motion detection is, and you could and you, and I get on my uh, phone. I have to disable it during the show because it's always going off. Hey, hey, somebody's coming up the path. It's always the kid coming and going stuff like that. But it's nice. You can see what's going on. This is true. Do so, you carry one of those great mail bags? Those leather mail bags. We have to. It's a requirement. I like those. Can you buy those as a civilian? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe for a good for the price. If the price. <laughs> just, just <laughs> say, hey, hey, mailman, can I buy your bag? They're probably too big for like, like. I just have. I just like how they look. Yeah, they they do look nice. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, so you're you a walking. Recommend? You're a walking mail carrier. You walk from door to door. I do. Well, I'm. I'm I'm everywhere. Because like, my mail person drives up a little Jeep, drives in a little Jeep. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, well, she doesn't have to. Is. Yeah. That's nice. But you stay in shape. You get to know all the kitty cats and the doggies on the route. Yes. And I have a lot of business customers. So. Oh, see, that's fun. I never met a mail carrier who wasn't very cheerful. I think it's a good job. Good. Yeah, I think you, you need to have that attitude for sure. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, do. you but you're a people person. Um, so mean? use your people skills and ask your neighbors. Hey, can I borrow a cup of Wi-Fi? It's for a good cause. But otherwise, okay. yeah, you do need you do need internet. There, you know, okay. your phone company probably better better deal than getting a phone. Your phone company will sell a a, a little Wi-Fi like a credit card sized device that gets internet from their cell service, and then it is a Wi-Fi access point. A lot of people use that for home. The only disadvantage of those is they usually are limited to five gigabytes a month, but that's enough for your doorbell. That should be enough, right? Yeah. Five gigs? Okay. Yeah. And you Instead of getting a phone, just get that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you recommend that the doorbell too, or is there a better version? Well, they're a sponsor, so I happen to like them a lot. <laughs> It's what Good. it's what I have. I have the original ring on my house. It has a feature that you would like, the neighborhood feature, where uh, you can share your video with other people in the neighborhood with ring doorbells, and it becomes a neighborhood watch system that's really effective. It's actually a really clever idea. Yeah, and I, I should talk more with my neighbors. I don't believe that they even have this. It's a very old, established neighborhood, but most of the neighborhoods out here do have them. Yeah. Yeah, you see them, right? You see them every time you go to a door. There's a door. That's why you thought, I'm going to get one of these. Everybody's got them. Exactly. And they <laughs> talk to you. They, 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 yes. The customer can see Hello? you wherever they're uh, at. And uh, they talk to yeah, you leave, the, leave the package on the doorstep. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in Hawaii, but go ahead and leave Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what am I thinking? You're like, of course you experience these all the time. Yes, I do. Uh, is, it, is it mail carrier approved? I believe so. I, I like it. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, keep me honest. <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you. Good talking to you, too. Thank Have you. a great day. Bye-bye. Leo <laughs> Laporte, the tech guy. Mail carrier approved. That is awesome. Rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Don't get the boat over. Rock the boat. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, disc going out with Mad Magazine's maddest writer. He can do the rope like nobody's business. Do you remember those old uh, moves, Dickie D? Some of them, not a lot of them. The hustle. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that I do. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, Dickie uh, joins us. Not, takes a little time out from writing for Mad Magazine to... Uh, Talk about gizmos and gadgets, because he's kind of a gizmo 
Wizard. That's what we call him, the Giz Wiz. What do you What do you got? Yeah, for us? yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, a lot of events in in July uh, promoting holiday gift ideas because back to the days when print magazines needed to know everything by September first. So, at one of these events, I found out about Arcade. It's called Arcade One Up. Now, the salesman there is one of the funniest people I met unintentionally, okay? So he said, people who like arcade games buy full-size arcade games for their basements. And they're three to four thousand dollars. They weigh hundred they weigh hundreds of pounds. He said, but we are making a four foot high, four hundred dollar arcade uh, device. And we've licensed a lot of the games from Atari. And I said, sir, I live in a two and a half room apartment. He goes, oh, Dick, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect for that. He's clearly never been to your place. No, no, not only that, Leo, he says, but if you have a house, he said, they just weigh 60 to 65 pounds. So you play, you play in the bedroom, then you bring it to the den. Uh, and then and then bring it out to the patio. And he said the best thing is when your kid goes back to college, they can take it with them. What? I know. I'm thinking. Now, these are the old arcade games. These are, yes. These are from the good old days. Yes. You know, Midway. Defender. But they look like I'm just looking at the on your website. Gizwiz does biz. They, they look like uh, the old kind of, you know, arcade games you would play at the. <laughs> At the, yes, the gallery. Exactly. That, yeah. all the matching buttons, uh, whatever the original machine had. Now they use, you know, a 17-inch TV in there. Yeah, there's and nothing it, in them. The whole thing's it, it, hollow. There's that, a Raspberry Pi, probably. Yes, I mean, they yes, don't need much to do this. That's exactly right. Uh, but they, you know, they they commissioned the original artwork and and all the original games. Uh, Is so it just if one you, game per no, the, unit? No, it's four games in each one. If you go to their website, you'll see each unit, and then on the bottom of each unit, it tells you what games is inside it. So a it's three Fighter, quarters scale. So it's three quarters the size of the one you played. Exactly. As a kid. All right. And if you want to stand, they make a base so that you can make it the height. Of the ah, original, okay, but mainly it's for people who want to sit and play, and they even sell a little stool for us old people now, who want to sit. Does sit it? And play can games. I charge people to use? It? Are they like? Does it have quarters? There, there's no coin slot. But oh, I would, you man. know, if I had had one, just put a tip jar on. Oh, it. this is the one I'd get. It's got Rampage, Gauntlet, Joust, and Defender. I love Joust. I love Defender. I love Gauntlet. I don't know about Rampage. <laughs> there you go. This is well, these Lee, are my gonna, games. That, you know what? Bring it to the bedroom. Carry it into the kitchen. It is so convenient. Bring it in the backyard. <laughs> 60 pounds. 60 pounds. You bring it to the back. studio. You're crazy. Centipede, <laughs> Crystal Castles, Missile Command, and Millipede. Oh, wh I want that one, too. Okay. Maybe I'll get you a deal. Final Fight, Ghosts and Goblins, 1944. And I can't even read what that is. Spider? Cider? I think it's Spider. Lunar Lander, Asteroids, Tempest. Oh, I want that one. And oh man, <laughs> Major Havoc. Well, you have to wait till the fall, but uh, you can. Pre and Street Fighter. It's oh, all the different versions is, of Street Fighter. This is incredible. And the, if you get the Centipede one, see the thing is about Joust and Centipede. You need like these roller balls to play it. Oh, oh, they do. They have the controls. They do. Oh, yes. My goodness. Whatever the original arcade now uh, form of play. I have to point out. Okay, go ahead. You can build one of these using a Raspberry Pi and old TV oh, lamp. Yes, yes. And you put MAME or something on it and you could play like 3,000 games. But those are illegal. This is licensed. This is licensed. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. I'm tempted. How much? Uh, $400. $399. That's surprisingly good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It comes in kit form. Uh, I spent they, that much just playing Joust in quarters. <laughs> That's 1,600 games of Joust. Well, you know what? You could put it in the studio with a tip jar. <laughs> but they're small. They're, yeah, well, they're four feet high. So they're, our little, they're like, you'll feel like... I, man, I've grown a lot since those days. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's why you know, they seem so little, big when I was a kid. You had to buy the little stool. I had, to, right. I had to get on a stool just to play them. Now, <laughs> now I have to have a stool for the game. Yeah, and that's it's a 17-inch cool. uh, screen that you're playing on. Want to know more? Uh, Go to gizwizbit.biz. This is good stuff, Dick. I like yeah, it. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, some assembly required.
Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. That's really neat. And it, the website is arcade1up.com. Dick's website is gizwiz.biz. Actually, just go there because he's got the link, gizwiz.biz. And while, you know, click the link that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guys. That, uh, that's all the stuff he ever talks about on our show. But he does other shows like World News Now on, uh, on uh, ABC. So if you want to find out what he talks about on those shows, you can go to the website. Uh, and he's got links there. He also has a link to his What the Heck Is It contest a chance to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine by identifying a close-up picture of some oddball gizmo or gadget from his warehouse. He's been collecting these for some time, friends. Yes. All right, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Okay, buddy. Take Bye. care. That is that such memories. That's actually how I got into technology, is I would go to the Chuck E. Cheese... Down the road, right after my radio show. Man, this is back in my 20s. This would be in the, uh, in the 70s, late 70s. And I'd go and I'd play. And I spent so much money on <laughs> Battle Zone and Asteroids. I thought, I should get one of those brand new Atari VCS video game systems. I, I should get one of those. Because it's, yeah, it's like hundreds of dollars. But, it, but I'll save money in the long run. And I did. And I thought, well, this is kind of cool. But really, the games are better if you get the Atari 400 computer. Oh, that was a little more money. So I sold the VCS. I got the 400 computer. Ooh, I started typing in stuff, but it had a terrible keyboard. You know, for a little bit more, you get the Atari 800. It has a real keyboard, and that was it. It was over for me. <laughs> and, and the tech guy was born. I had to do something to support my habit. I think I have time for another call before we have to wrap it up. Jerry's on the line from Costa Mesa, California. Hi, Jerry. Hi, sorry I missed you last time. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here now. Uh, somebody was laughing. Was that? <laughs> yep, it must have been me because I was uh, concentrating on my screen. I probably was laughing at you. You were laughing at me. Well, I'm glad we got you. Thank you for uh, holding on. What can I do for you? Yeah, well, I've been a listener of yours for a long time, and I always uh, take your advice seriously. So I was uh, scouting a new printer, so I went out and bought the Echo Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, and it, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I ran flawlessly for about three months. Uh oh. Um, two weeks ago, I had this. I could not get it to print for me. Every time I went on, went to print something, it told me it wasn't online. Well, hang on for a sec, because I do have to take a break. Wrap it up. Okay. But I'll I'll help you while we're in the break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And if you're on the line, hang on. We're gonna get to all your calls in a bit. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. -T, it stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Well, let me finish up with you, though, before we go to our uh, next one. So, um, what? Ha so you can't? It just doesn't print at all, or what happens? Yeah, it just doesn't print at all. It won't acknowledge anything. So I, I'm thinking, okay, I've done something wrong. So I will go to Epson. So I. Go on with one of the Epson techs. Nice gal. She runs me through the whole thing. We reinstall the... The, uh, the, the drivers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And try to give... No, wouldn't work. She said, well, you really need to go to Microsoft and find out it's got to be something with your, com oh, your computer. Oh, Lord. I wish people wouldn't do that. So I go off to Microsoft and spend like an hour and a half on yeah. the phone with Microsoft. And, of course, they went, try to sign me up for a $49 uh, repair... Yeah, it's not. It's not no, none of this makes sense. Unfortunately, you know, computers are designed not designed for mortals, not for designed yeah. for humans. They're designed for <laughs> IT professionals by IT professionals. And the number one biggest problem people have is printing. It's just it's yeah. It's it, I don't know why it's held together with bailing wire and chewing gum. I don't know. It's just yeah. And I was talking to some IT guys the other day, and they say that's their worst. Nightmare. Somebody calls up and I can't print. So yeah. there's so well, many things that could go wrong. Go ahead. Okay, so I came up with a solution, I thought. So I 
I'm online, I'm looking at various things, and I came up with an outlet called Driver Support Tech. And I went on their, went to look at their service, and I, the service that claims they'll, you know, you sign up for nine ninety five, I think is what the service is, and uh, they'll clean your computer up, da-da, make everything run better, da-da. And I thought, well, the hell with it. I, I've spent like three hours on the phone, on the computer with, with uh, this other stuff, so I would do it with them. So I did. I was on the phone for about an hour with their tech. He cleaned my computer. Wonderful. I've got it so speedy now, I can't believe it. My my printer works. Excellent. Uh, I just, I can't say enough. I don't know what Microsoft, you know, puts all these things on. They want you to sign up or sign into all of their... What this is mind-boggling because normally I would say these guys are at best just selling you a, a yeah. pack of well, hoo-ha and at worst are hackers. So what's the name of this one that you went to? I went to Driver Support. Driver Support. Right. And and uh, the Windows Driver Authority. So he got online remote. He got online remotely. Remotely. Watching him empty, you know, going through all my programs to find out if I had any malware or what of that. Because I've got safety stuff on my computer. I, you know, went through all of that stuff, cleaned everything out. I just, I, when we finished, I was in awe. I can turn that printer on; it prints everything. It prints off the internet for me. It scans. It does all the stuff that you know I bought the the uh, printer for. And, and they charge uh, you how much? Nine ninety five. Nine dollars $9.95? You got it. Well, I would, I'll be honest, if you'd asked me ahead of time, I wouldn't have recommended it. Yep. Um, well, I was very skeptical about it, but I'll tell you what, I was so damn mad. Because when I bought the printer originally, you know, I went to the thing uh, following the directions. I'm pretty savvy. I've been around computers since you invented them. And uh, my computer ran, you know, halfway decently. I... But I tell you, I had somebody from come in and do the installation for me because I wanted to do uh, Wi-Fi. And so he came in, set it up. It ran just perfectly. Well, I'm glad you had a success. So, and it was cheap. Yep. Um, yep. And congratulations. I actually yeah, can't get on the site because it's blocked due to malware from our system. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I couldn't recommend them highly enough. They just, they really, they really did a great job. And, um, I don't know. I, I, every once in a while I get to the point where I think, oh, somebody's got a hold on me. Yeah. And my computer's acting up and I, you know, I do the control delete, you know, stuff to get rid of whoever's horsing around with my computer. And I'd gotten to the point where I was just, you know, I went two weeks without my printer. Well, I'm thrilled went, that they got it working. I, I yeah. would never have recommended this. Yeah. But I'll, I'll it sounds you like you, you found somebody uh, who really does what they say and not for yeah. very much. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. No. All right. Have a good one. I'm a photographer. Long, long gone photographer. I was an aerial photographer for 30 years. Oh, my now. goodness. Yep. Did you hang out of airplanes and helicopters? A airplanes, helicopters, blimps, balloons, whatever it was. Wow. In the air. Yeah. Wow. So, used all kinds of, uh, I was a uh, Canon pro for years. They used to give me cameras to destroy them. Oh, but this was yeah. film, right? This was film, and when we went over to digital, I was uh, digital for about 10, 12 years, and then I lost sight in one eye, and uh, it's so funny. Oh, how and frustrating is that as a photographer? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, but I, I still do a fair amount of work with digital stuff because I can point and shoot kind of. Nice. Work, but, uh, well, yeah, it's wonderful to meet you. Do you have a website for your uh, pictures, Jerry? Well, actually, yeah. You could look um, up uh, Jerry G. E R I concert C O N S as in Sierra E R. Okay. Oh, I see it. Just Google, just Google me, and I'm there. boating through the lens. Yep. L A Maritime Museum, and yep. her eye yep. for yachts is. There's an article about you in the New in the L A Times. Yeah. Your plane oh, yeah. crashed into the ocean. Is that how you lost your eyesight? <laughs> 
No, I've had a lot of crashes. No, I had a funny, <laughs> just a stupid accident. But anyway, no. Nice. Oh, this is great. I'm going to look at all your stuff. How nice to meet you, Jerry. Well, nice to meet you, too. And I really, really enjoy your show. You're practical. You give a lot of great advice. I listen to you every Saturday. So you take pictures of yachts. I do. Wow. Fancy yachts. Every, every big one that's been around for 35 years. I love I yachts. And do the yacht owners pay you for this? Well, of course. <laughs> what a great idea. Did you come up with that? Well, there are a few of us out. Actually, I'm about one of about a dozen women aerial photographers in the world. So, yeah, there's a few of us out there. That is so cool. Aerial yacht Thank photography. You. you got it. Well, it's so nice to meet you, Jerry. So nice to meet you, too. Take care. Nice, nice on the phone as you are at the end. Oh, you're a sweetie. Thank you. Take uh -huh. care. Bye -bye. I love your pictures. Look, they're in the L.A. Maritime Museum. This is awesome. Wow.